where's me audio gone in the game? I think we need to restart Unity according to that. Now I'm just going to get myself a shirt on before I show my ugly mug in the top right corner. And I shall be ready to start on the hour as planned. Always good to start a couple of minutes early, I reckon. Get you guys all in. Get the punters in before the show starts. That's what they say. I don't know who says that exactly, but somebody must say that. We're excited to see huge amounts of RPG progress this morning. It's going to be fun. It's going to be worth it. Or maybe it's not. <laughs> Never know. Okay, I now have a shirt on. This is progress. Thank you very much for being here, Perceptual. Hello, Michael. I know Michael quite well, really. Known him for well, a long time. Hello, Sasha258. Where in the world are you from? And Stress Test, where in the world are you from? Be good to hear from all of you. Okay. I'm now shirt on and video safe. There we go. Good good hellos to you all. Mornings and everything. Tongue tied, twisted, etc. So we are here in the RPG today. Hey dude, hey Switzerland. Lots of people here. So I'm gonna leave the chat there. Excuse me doing that. I just makes it much, much easier for me to work on one screen. Um, sorry if it's really annoying. If it's really, really annoying, then flame me and tell me and I'll do something about it. But uh, like getting a second monitor. But I've got kind of a clean desk set up right now, so. I'd, uh, I'd prefer not. And uh, yes, so we're going to be working, we being me, that's the royal we, are going to be working on the RPG today. And I'm going to be stress testing the architecture. So let's catch up with uh, where we are. By the way, just to be clear what's going on here, I'm prototyping the RPG. This is not the same as the part two Udemy course, which is uh, going to accompany this uh, once I've done enough prototyping. Thanks for that large banner of red there, Uni Udemy. Udemy, Unity, Unity. All right. Let's just quickly recap where we're from. Gone for this uh, slightly interesting quests architecture where the quest information is stored as game objects and it seems to be working so far, which is kind of surprising and delighting me. Just gonna focus myself on the camera. Maybe I was already focused. My beard goes really strange on my retina screen when I get focused. So I'm gonna mute the game audio because I think it's gonna drive everybody nuts and just make sure that it's working. So. Um, the UI scaling is a bit off. Let's have a little look at that. There you go. Just change the game window um, resolution. That'll fix that. So the find the bridge, the escape the pen quest is active. The find the bridge quest is available. I can go and get the find the bridge quest from this guy. Uh, the UI anchoring is off, but we're not too worried about that at this particular instant. And that one is now started. Then if I escape the pen, then escape the pen becomes complete. Cool. I think what I'll do first as a bit of a warm up is I'll fix that UI and I'll put a layer, a UI layer on so that um, so that it updates the active quests from the state of these game objects. You think the alpha channel on my chat bubble texture is reversed on my chat bubble texture. Oh, that's interesting. What's a chat bubble texture terabyte? Oh yeah, there it is. Yes, yeah, rubbish. It's there. It's rubbish on purpose. Um, the speech bubble. That's there just for just for to kind of remind Rick that we need to do something about it, and he needs to change it for art that's uh, that's better. If I make it anywhere near real art, then it's going to end up uh, it's going to end up stuck in the game by mistake. So yes, thank you for telling me that, Terra Vice. You're quite right, and I, I kind of almost on purpose. He wants to be conspicuously ugly art. Hey, I'm Temmy. Thank you very much for subscribing with Twitch Prime. You rock. And Avi NL, I don't know if you're on today, but top of the cheering list. Well done with that as well. All right, let's uh, go in and sort out this UI first. So let's go to the game canvas and just go and take a look. 2D, still never quite get the 2D, 3D business with Unity. Never 100% vibes with me. So the problem with this dude is he's anchored to the center of the screen. So if I click on the quest list, it's anchored currently to the center of the screen. If I was to just move the anchors, even lazily like that, that should fix the anchoring such that when I play the game and actually get a quest, there you go, escape the pen at least ends up in the top left. All right, I'm gonna commit what I'm doing. I mean, not actually make a commit, but I'm gonna remind myself what I'm trying to do, which is I'm gonna drive quest UI from uh, game objects. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to arrange that there's an object probably sitting right here on quests, or maybe on quest list for the moment, so that we don't have to make any other classes. It's going to iterate through all the children in this quest object, seeing what state they're in, what enum state they're in, and then any that are in available state, it's going to show me as available. Um, am I going to do that on every update? Yeah, for now. Uh, am I going to do it in update in the long term? Probably not. But until I have any reason to worry about it, I'm going to keep things simple. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go into the quest journal. I'm going to open Visual Studio. So the idea is that we get a the player gets a representation of the active quest, not just this kind of debug information that sits here in the inspector. So if you've got any questions, you've got any concerns, you've got any conundrums, you've got any problems with the stream, tell me. We're slowly becoming professionals, so the problems with the stream should be less than they were before. Um, what does being a professional mean? Probably means we've got more than one subscriber, which we have now. Definitely got at least two. Um, subscribers so that's awesome uh, thank you very much everybody for being here and supporting all of this behind the scenes work I'm gonna put some glasses on I think because I've got a feeling I'm gonna be staring at the screen for just a while uh, so a special special EC which part of the course is this you'd like to follow from the beginning the way to follow from the beginning is either to go to our twitch repo uh, twitch our github repo which is there and pull where I am which is our, well the current state is the end of the stream 7 I think branch um, yeah, stream seven branch. I'm going to burst. I'm on stream eight now, but I haven't pushed anything. And if you want to um, see how we got to this point in the game, then what you're looking for is this. It's part one, the epic part one of the Unity RPG course. So it's very, it's a course that takes you through, drags you through the mud as to how we got to this point in the game. And that will show you every single detail. You can kind of do both, actually. You, if you want to make an RPG from this point forward, you can just follow what I'm doing on these streams and buy the Part 2 course when it becomes available. Pick up your game in terms of questing, combat, etc. using our repo. Start from this start state. And then, then in the longer term, you could go back to Part 1 and replace all of the early village design and the, uh, core, uh, and the uh, core combat mechanic and all the rest of it. So that eventually feel ownership over all of the code. So. Cool, yeah, good that you've done our real courses. Yeah, this is the Unity RPG. It's a much, much more, much, much more in-depth project. It's our biggest, most ambitious project by a long way. Anyway, I diver, di, di, what am I doing? Diverging, no, digressing, I think is the word. I'm really hungry. You know what, in a minute, you can have a really boring stream for five minutes because I'm going to go and get a cup of coffee. Or well, I could ask somebody to bring me a cup of coffee. I'm going to do that. Let's do that. Give me one second. Let's just, they've probably gone for lunch, but then what can bring me coffee? Um, We'll do so after they've had their lunch. Okay, because I only eat once a day, and I haven't eaten now since about eight, nine, or about nine, ten p.m. yesterday evening, which is quite normal for me. But I get a couple of hunger pangs in the day, and this is one of them. So I'm just going to keep this all in the quest journal for now. I'm just going to say that the quest journal, to better do its job and to update this piece of UI that it's actually physically sitting on the same game object. It's one of the things it's going to need to do in terms of um, cache references is it's going to need to know uh, what the parent object is the quest. So let's call it quest parent object. We might make this quest parent object persist through game loads, uh, level loads later, but we don't know yet. So I'm going to call it quest parent. Um, actually, let's think about the type. Do we do this as a transform? I only need the transform. So I'm going to do it as a transform. Quest parent object transform don't need to say either of those won't see transform in the name of the variable because it's the type is transform uh, you don't need to repeat it in the variable name that seems to be bad practice they're about to get out of sync at one point so i'm just going to call it quest parent so then over here in the quest list by the way i'm guessing everything on the stream is pucker today um, we have I have a dedicated broadband line for streaming now so that's how seriously I take sharing the behind the scenes with you guys and uh, hopefully that has sorted things out loads all right quest list it wants to know now let's collapse down all the stuff we don't need to see information hiding very good for our sanity wants to know what the quest parent is great to know Temi stable so far and thank you once again for subscribing you guys rock um, yeah that's awesome so who's going to be on the Meet the Mentors tomorrow evening, by the way? We're going to have their code review. Terra Vice, you're going to come back tomorrow tomorrow for a second round in the ring with Sam and I, or possibly just me, or possibly just Sam. But anyway, one of us, or N of us, or N is two or less, let us know. Oh, you'll be there. Awesome. So you'll get a second code review, and the others will have to dive in too. Remember, other Tier 3 subscribers, if you want your code reviewing tomorrow, uh, same Zoom link as last week, and um, 
and that'd be awesome. Be there, be on Zoom about 10, 15 minutes early and be ready to share. All right, so now that we know what the parent transform is, we can start to iterate through. So let's just print and iterate through for the moment. Uh, when am I gonna do this? I'm gonna do this on update for now. So messages, then public methods, then private message, methods. Okay, let's do messages first. Why do I do messages first? Because you're most out of control of method, me messages. They get, the, your code gets called by the engine. So um, I like to put those first. Just, it's just a decision, right? It's not, a, it's not right or wrong. So uh, I very quickly am going to make myself a to-do and then say, question, do I want to do this on update? But for now, I just want to get the functionality. No point in optimizing functionality that you don't know is any good. Let's get the functionality. On update, really? Okay, before I even start, it's like, should I do this on update? Well, I'm going to do it on update for now because it's simplest, by far the simplest. Um, and what am I going to do? I'm going to iterate through the quest parents. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make a method that doesn't exist called... Um, I'm just going to update quests from hierarchy, world, scene, scene. Update quests from scene, all right? And that's, I'm going to make a method for that. Boom, now that's a private method, so really I should move it down it doesn't make any difference functionally, as most of you know. I'm gonna move this um, commenter there on the end of that line. And then we're going to go through all of these chip parents, uh, all of these game objects. So we're gonna go for each. Now you've got an iterable, transforms are iterable, which is really useful. So for each transform, can I use var here? I don't know, let's have a look. For each var um, child in uh, quest parent. Now if you iterate over a, um, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, I'm not typing properly. If you iterate over a transform, you get all the children. Let's prove that. Let's just, hello. Maybe I can't use var in there. I should be able to. Print a child. Okay, let's just do that. Let's just go, and we'll talk about whether I should use var or specify the type there in a bit. We're going to talk about that mainly in our, it's probably tomorrow. All right, so let's just check that if we have a quest list that has a link to the parent transform of the quest objects and that we do a for each over those that we just get the name we should just see come into the console escape the pen and find the bridge um, escape the pen and find the bridge both unity transforms okay good so that works and the var works there why do var um, because why not why do you want to type transform when you can type var I mean it, it this allows you to in one step now change um, the type of quest parent. If I go up to the top here and change this to game object, right? Quest parent becomes a game object. Look, this code will still work. Probably. Um, what's wrong with that? It's a game object, not iterable. Okay. Well, it would work if quest ob uh, if this thing was uh, something that you could actually enumerate over. Okay. So if I move to another enumerable type, then I wouldn't have to change the type of it both here and here. This is why I prefer var in a nutshell. By the way, uh, it'd be great if some of you could clip some things. If you think anything's useful, please clip it. Um, and share it, that would be super handy for other people. I'll clip that for now, but there's an, an example, apart from it's a bad example because game object isn't iterable, which is why I use transform, but if game object was iterable, I'd only had to make the change to the type here, and then this for each loop would stay, the syntax would stay the same. So one good reason to use var. It's not any less safe using var. You're still going to get the same warnings in the same place. C Sharp still knows at compile time what the type of child is here, okay? It already knows that, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it, basically. All right, so let's go ahead and um, I'm iterating over those guys. What I need to do is not just print the child. I need to go and see what the state is. So I need to somehow cast it or get it as a quest. So print qu child as quest. Well, can we do that type of cast? Let's have a look. Probably. So now let's have a look and see if once we've got the child as a quest. Well, let's just do that. Let's go get the quest. So think about the type conversions here, see if they're going to work. What do we get back? We get null. So that means it's going to let me try and cast child as just a transform to a quest. Not going to work. Why? Because, um, yeah, it's because it's not a collection, perceptual lucidity. That's the right word. Not yet, yeah, exactly. It's because game object's not a collection. Um, it's not going to let me do this. So what I'm going to need to do is child.getComponent. Uh, hold on, why can't I do child.getComponent? Because it's not a game object yet. Okay, so I think you can cast from child to game object. Let's just check that. It's all very well that the compiler will let you. The question is, will at runtime that cast work? And it will not for whatever reason. Why not? 
um, why can't I cast a transform, which this must be now, to a game object? Just to make sure I didn't mess up anything in my talking about var. Don't think I did. Find the bridge, transform, transform, transform. So let's try it the other way. Let's try a prefix cast like that, game object child. Let's see if that works. I can't remember whether you can cast that way and whether that way is safe or not. Invalid cast, can't uh, type uh, cast from source to destination type. No. Oh, we have a, what's this? Oh, just a pop up. Maybe child.game object. Well, yes, that's what I was thinking, but. No, you can't because child is the transform. So how do we get the game object from the transform? Get component in children for that game object. Then iterate through. Yes, I could just go and get all the, I could do that. That's true. Yeah, I could. Yeah, but you see the child.game object isn't going to work here. Um, now I wonder, that's not because of type inference, is it? It is, aha, other side of type inference. Quite interesting, I'll click that as well. So <laughs> the type inference var made it easier there to, to make a single change to the type of the quest parent if I ever wanted to, but it didn't allow me to do, um, to do that game object query on the child. So that's quite interesting. Thank you Perceptual for that legs up, leg up there. Escape the pen, now we've got them as game objects and we're on the way, right? So uh, then we can go and get the component if we wanted to. And there's lots and lots of ways to do this. Uh, let's go get the component quest. Uh, and then let's go and get the state. Now, what was it? Get quest state like that. So that's a long minging old line. But if we did that, then we would end up with, and there's lots of nicer ways to do it. And we can analyze the speed of it later when we need to. But we can go through and we can see that all quests are available is what it's telling me. All right. So now we can start thinking about, well, let, how, do we do, how do we do this in a nice way? Do I directly update the UI from this method? I will for now. Should I later sort of return something that tells me the combination of, uh, of its state? Maybe, but uh, who cares for now? So we're just going to update the quest from the scene. So I'm going to do all, all of this in one place. So let's put, let's put a variable in here, which is the, um, it's a quest state, which should be available here. So var quest state doesn't make sense. I'm going to leave it as var. And then I'm just going to say uh, quest state equals, and then we're just going to go get this thing. And then we're going to make sure that that type inference works and that the quest state type is available over here, which it should be because over in quest, I defined or declared quest state outside the class. So it should be available here as well. So if I hover over var, what do we get? We get something that's of an enum of type quest state, which is awesome. Oh, look at this. It's a cup of coffee coming. Thank you very much, Pete. Good limbo dancing. Really appreciate that. Yeah, I've got my afternoon oh. hunger pang. I'm like, wow, I'm dying here. Oh, thank you, Pete. Awesome. So quest state, got my quest state there. So now I can just print, well, there's no point in printing the quest state. I'm doing absolutely nothing by doing that. So what I want to do is, I don't want to cache. So here it's very tempting to try and put all the quest states, all these questions in some other data object, yeah? But the data object we're going for, the data structure is, for better or worse, don't know in the long term, but the data structure I'm going for is this hierarchy, is the instantiated objects in the seed. So trying to put it into any other data structure inside the code here would be caching that. And if I was going to do that, I might as well just store it in, in there. I'm trying to store it only in the scene so that I know that nothing is cached. Everything is directly off this information. So for better or worse, that's what I'm going for. So then what I need to do is, well, if I'm going to update the quest from the scene, then I better clear the quest dialog to start with, right? So we're just going to clear the quest dialog, which is there. Second time I've used this piece of code. Third time, I would definitely be, uh, definitely be doing something else about it, maybe factoring that out. And for each one, I'm just going to go um, git component.text equals uh, plus equals plus equals. And this is very much like what we've done before. It's the quest state which should go as a string, plus, let's put in a new line. Oh, if I can type properly, can I type properly today? Let's see. All right, so let's try that. That should do it, and that should give us a, a player a view of what the active quests are. Then I can move on. I, can start, I want to start putting some pressure on the quest architecture now. Escape the pen, 1101. Oh, that's interesting. What's going on there? So I clear it, I do that, and then I clear it again. Where am I getting one, one, zero? That's interesting. What do I get? 
what have I got there? What have I done? One zero one zero. It does not look good. Escape the pen briefly pops up. Find the bridge pop briefly pops up. Where am I getting the one 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 one? Is that some way that it is now printing out the values of the enums? I think is what's happening here. So let's try that. The internal we had in the last stream, we had the internal representations of enums coming to bite us, which was quite interesting. Available, available, started, available, started, started. Good. Okay. So now, so that was quite interesting. If you just print out the quest state in this particular case, the way that it is printing to the console, it's printing the enum values behind the scenes. Um, <laughs> hey, Temi, what's this one meal a day torture? It's not torture. It's really not torture. This is the first genuinely, and I've been trampolining and all sorts, genuinely the first time today I've got a tool hungry. Um, I get hungry once, which is around now. I have a coffee that solves it. Um, and then before I know where I am, it's 5 p.m. and I'm stuffing my face. Why? Because I need to do something to stay lean or I wouldn't because I love food. Benefits, they're supposed to be. Look up intermittent fasting. I didn't even know it was called intermittent fasting. I just started doing it and um, I feel great on it. So um, why would I not keep doing it, basically? It's supposed to, I don't want to give you the medical stuff because I haven't researched it well enough, but it's supposed to be good for you to not eat for a while. It seems natural to not eat for a while as well. So um, ketosis, etc. yeah, probably. So actually, all we're doing here, actually, I shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be putting in the quest state. We don't even need to do that. We just need to say that if the quest is available. So I don't want to write that code here, even though it's incredibly simple. I'm going to immediately extract this so that I keep the wood from the trees and say, um, you know, list quest if available. Uh, no, not if available, if started. And that's the benefit of refactoring right there, right? We're going to list the quest if the quest has started. So I go and get the quest state. Now I just say if the quest state. I really just want to write in English the whole time, especially when I'm trying to talk and code, because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to have to think too hard, basically. Okay, if the quest state is started, then it's not the quest state we're going to add, but it's actually the uh, child.gameobject.name we're going to add, and that should convert to string nicely. All right, so we're just basically uh, in this update quest from scene. We're going to list the quest if started. That's it. So let's just try. Skibbity bibbity, skibbity bibbity. So boom, escape the pen. And then if I go and escape the pen, oh, I've escaped the pen. It's gone. And then if I uh, escape the pen, then I escape the pen. And then if I find the bridge, I've got two quests. And if I go and escape the pen the other way, I ain't a fug. He says, you don't sound like a fug to me. Boom, just find the bridge. Ah, I think that's progress. Is it beautiful architecturally? You can't even argue about it at the moment because there's not enough there's not enough stuff going on to have an architectural argument. So let's not have any arguments. Let's move forward. Let's create some new functionality, you know? So um, of course I'm not completely happy with, I'm never happy with any of my code. And I'm not at all happy with the fact that we are, for example, up, uh, updating the question on the scene every single update. But is it costing us a lot? Well, I don't know. Let's have a look. I doubt it. I strongly doubt it. Ah, uh, oh, where's everything gone? Help. Help. I can't find anything. Profiler. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. New version of Unity. Ooh, look at that stuff. Look at all that. So let's go and have a look if we can find it. Where is it? It's going to be CPU usage I want. Around here somewhere I want. Now, I don't want necessarily a timeline. I want this. There you go. Let's just pause. Stop recording for a minute. Let's have a look. Late update particle overhead. So where is my, what's the name of the method that we think might be slowing things down? My quest journal. Quest journal update. Look at that. It's taking basically no time. So who cares at the end of the day that I'm doing it in update? That's my point is it's just not taking time so you can get all on your high horse about the fact we should be using some sort of messaging system and only updating these quests when things change and maybe we should but the code's harder to read and the very sending of those messages may may cause take more time than um than what we're doing here we don't know how the compiler is going to optimize this out and furthermore the type of overhead that is consistent is much better and easier to debug than the type of overhead that isn't you know if you if you use some elaborate system to get to do things like that and 
you don't catch in your performance profiling that that is going to take a long time. You're going to get like the game stuttering every time you start a quest, just a few couple of frames missing or something. And it's really hard to debug because it's not happening the whole time. I'd rather have a fixed overhead here that I've got a chance of finding all of the time because it's more conspicuous. So it's the same mentality as having these really ugly, as Terravice pointed out, inverted graphics here. They're, they're conspicuously problematic. Therefore, we're going to get to them without having to have a massive like Trello or Asana list of things we need to do, right? It's baked, baked right in. I do a lot of stuff that's baked right in. <sighs> How far? I'm, I'm going to need to drink that coffee. Let's take questions for a moment. If I don't drink the coffee, then obviously it's not going to solve my hungers, which aren't so bad. But anyway, so maximize the chat. There you go. Oh, we've got new sounds, by the way. I don't know if these work. They may be really loud. Be ready. So we've got this. Did that work? Did that actually come out to you guys? Because Yan and I very maturely did that at the end of a video. I waved, and I waved so kind of quickly like this that Yan's made that sound, and I said, we've got to have that sound. So there it is. Uh, anybody who's on the Godot course will see that in an upcoming update. That is just how mature and professional we are. I'm just going to refocus myself because I like that pin sharp look um cool bindi i like the heart and then we've got uh, for whenever i say string reference whoop, did that work you said you wanted the the spit and the ding now look i apologize for anybody who is in singapore or any other country where spitting is dis actually spitting is disgusting anywhere so it's not that it's disgusting in singapore it's just really frowned upon in singapore um it's no disrespect to anybody there i do not spit out in public it's a, it's just a meme okay so when i do this whoop, then that's because I've said something like string reference or magic number could get old really quickly. And then this is painful. The final sound effect is painful and I won't, no, I won't do it until we need to. Anyway, I'm going to drink my coffee. Ask questions, guys. Ask questions. How are we doing on the stream? I'm guessing the stream is stable, which is cool. Relatively no number. Relatively no numbers is what I'm trying to say. But it is like five in the morning or something um, in on the West Coast, is it not, of the States, which is where a lot of people are. A lot of people all over the place. They're not just on the west coast of the state. There is the world outside of California. Not that Californians would think so. But yes, it's just after 5 a.m. That's ridiculously early. Terra Vice, Wild West. Thank you very much for the three dollars worth of cheers there. That's really cool. Thank you for your extra support. Wild West, Ben. 7 a.m. here. Cool. So the sun, as the sun rolls across America. Anyway, if I don't drink this coffee, I'm never going to get any coffee. Um, just ask questions. I'll be back with you in a minute. 8.30 a.m. East Coast is best. Is that what you're saying? That's kind of now. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm guessing the state is staying roughly the same size. So if the sun at the equator does 900 miles an hour-ish, and then three hours across the states, eight, nine, 18, 27, 2,700 miles across the states, plus a load of slack either in for the way that time zones are quantified. Hmm. Vaguely checks out. Hmm. It won't be long. Excuse the tea break with coffee. Oh, it's a peaceful stream. People are going to be re-watching this. Oh, uh, by the way, I've got news for you. It's not very exciting news. But it is this. Uh, Gamedev.tv Twitch events. What I done did in the middle of the night is I got Rick to restream the previous stream. The stream were, that made me actually make a real effort on fixing up our technology was episode seven of this RPG series. It was awful. There was just technical problems galore um, and luckily my my little streaming box which actually i'm beginning to love again because it can't be a problem that it's constant bit rate or variable bit rate because this stream and the last three of two have been fine anyway the point is i edited the the previous episode seven into a director's cut here and rick did a replay of that in the middle of the night but in the middle of the day australian time and that has none of the stream issues in it so it's only on 20 odd minutes so if you want to catch up on something this pr link will probably work on lap desktop but not on mobile because twitch do that um but anyway that that's the director's cut and it's only 20 minutes and it's got none of the stream problems in it and it's straight off the sd card in the uh, in the terror in the terror deck thingy so just to let you know all right cool so where was i, I, was, oh, I should commit uh, it's quite hard this talking through everything I'm doing while coding. Coders are supposed to be introverts who sit there in the quiet and get their work done. I know, I know, that's why I only write a few lines of code a day. I get it. So drive Quest UI from game objects. We did. All right, so the game objects are holding that state. What what do I want to do next? Well, you tell me, guys, what do I want to do next? I think we should put a bit more pressure on the quest architecture. So far, the only way to uh, complete a quest 
is if we look in the environments in the meadows here is with a proximity detector. There's got to be other ways to complete tests rather, quests rather than proximity detectors. In fact, Jan, bless him, who's on a train on the way back to Suffolk now where he lives at the moment, next to my mum for his sins, bless him, um, he actually gave me a list and we put it in somewhere. And it would have been somewhere sensible. Here you go. So I had a quest collision script. We decided to have, have no quest data, that mostly quest is about uh, collision. Uh, let's go for kill. Let's just work through them. Why don't we have a quest kill script, all right? Is that okay with you guys? That the next thing we do is we have a behavior script that allows you to complete a quest based on the fact you have killed somebody. Not a very nice thing to do, of course, but it's a very computer game thing to do. So I think we're going to roll with it. Um, let's do that. If it's helpful at all, I got the video chat from several videos in, from several videos in this channel. I use it to find something recently. It's easy. And you can do it for all the videos if you like. You've got the video chat from several of the videos. Let me just see what that is. Dare I open this? Of course I do when it's Bindi. Bindi is a... I've spoken to Bindi in voice. It's not even as from India as he sounds like he is. He's from America. OneDrive. Could be anything, ladies and gentlemen. Game Dev Twitch chat. So is this like... What is it? Let's have a look. It's going to be on my disk. I'm downloading it. This is dangerous. So you guys are just going to send me anything. And then I'm... Oh, look at this. Chat logs. Oh, the chat log. I'm with you. And then we can now search back through it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, th having those in in the repo would be really handy. How can I get those Bindi sensibly? Because I can actually commit those as I go into the repo, couldn't I? I'm about to commit. Well, I just have committed. But I, uh, I could put those in the repo if I can get them in, in anything that's even remotely uh, relating to real time. That would be ideal. It's in the chat window from the videos. Have I got it right here now? It's a good idea. This would help you guys find stuff. We've been having indexing issues. Excuse my stupidity here. Is there some way for me to get it straight out of here? It's not the appearance. Mod icons, follow chat, slow mode, slow moderation actions, slow messages, caught by auto mod. No, if you could give me some in the chat window from the videos. Okay, let me just have a look over here, which is on the other machine, see if I can see it. I would love to commit those as we go. It would really help you guys to index it, wouldn't it? Um, share, no, that's embedding. Don't know, maybe you could tell me, Bindi. Uh, I used to get them, it's really easy, GitHub. Oh, you use a tool to go get it, ReChat tool, okay. Um, I wonder how you can get them to me. Be better if we could do it lean. So talking about lean production, if you know, if you're not on the stream or whatever, it'd be great if we could, if I could pull that chat history and slam it really quickly and easily into um, a readme file, uh, like a markdown file, that could then end up on the repo as a complete chat history, but also broken down into what was said in each of the different parts of the stream. I could run the tool, it's very fast. Well, look, why don't we do it? Do you guys mind? If you'd say don't do it, focus on the RPG, then say so in the chat and I will not do it and I'll focus on the RPG. I think this isn't going to work because I'm on Mac. Let's find out. I'll have a quick look though because this would take our chats forward, wouldn't it? It's, if you could go to the RPG and a bit like this kind of overview here, if you could also have another re MD file, a markdown file that could show you um, exactly what was said in that segment of the of the stream, I think that would be... Extreme, excuse me, extremely useful. See what I did there? It's like, it's like uh, anyway. Fine, not funny. So let's have a look. This is going to be a EXE, so I'm going to have to build it if we do that. Anybody want to do some Mac build? Save me time. I'm not going to do this while, right here. I'm going to get my trusty notepad of things to do out, um, and I will capture to do that. Bindi, it's a great idea, and uh, yeah, commit chat as you go. Well, handstands keeps us watching. The interaction with the viewers and unpredictability of topic explanation. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But yeah, I do. I, you're going to get different explanations here to, to what you is going to get on the Udemy courses. What will really help me, as I keep saying, is if, if one or two, ideally on each stream, we could have two people doing clips. And if you can take out a lock, because of course in anything, um, you know, in networking, there's that whole, you know, uh, on-time delivery, the big problems are on-time delivery, only once delivery. Uh, there are only two big problems there, on-time delivery, only once delivery, and only once delivery. We've had that joke recently. Um, so if you guys think something's worth clipping, so just say clipping that or something in the chat, and then that means you're clipping that, then you hit clip and share the clip. 
Um, and therefore, two people won't clip exactly the same thing. In theory, you're taking out a lock, right? Um, it's all predicated on me saying it's not anything useful. Okay, we're probably never getting any clips. So let's make a new C sharp script and we're going to call it kill, a quest kill, quest collision. Let's call it quest kill for the moment. I'm a little bit don't like starting a load of scripts with the same name. It sounds like those scripts should just be in a folder, but a script that's just called kill. Don't know, you're creating a class here. We can namespace it. That's, that's what's going on that, um, that, that you ought to be doing. If you find yourself making loads of script, quest collision, quest this, quest that, quest the other, then any time you prefix any file on your computer with the same word repeatedly, you should probably be putting that file in a folder. Well, in code, we should probably be putting that code into a namespace. So will I do that right now? No, because I want to focus on what I'm trying to do. What am I trying to do? Um, I don't know because I haven't pre-committed. I do know what I'm trying to do, which is I'm trying to create a, ki a quest kill quest kill behavior. Why? When I haven't polished any of the rest of it? Precisely because I haven't polished any of the rest of it. Iterative, uh, is it top down or bottom up this? You t it's neither. My, my style is neither top down nor bottom up. It's like a progressive JPEG loads. We are, we have, we can see that the quest system is sort of working, but it only works, and it works reasonably well now. I mean, it's got lots of things missing, but it only works with one thing, which is this proximity detector. I don't know for sure whether it's going to work when we come to, to, to the killing, you know, to detecting kills. So I'm going to put kill detection in and see if it works. And then, um, then how about if the whole thing needs a different architecture? Well, sure, we'll change it to a different architecture, and a bunch of the detail level code will be copy and paste or simple sort of substitutions. So better just to keep moving forward, in my opinion. I wish I could prove it by writing a huge number of lines of code in the day, but when I'm actually trying to talk and entertain at the same time, then that's really difficult. Anyway, quest kill. Here it is. I'm going to make myself a to do, which is to do, to do consider um, name spacing all quest star classes. Very easy to do. I just go namespace quest. Should I just do it? I'm going to do it. I, I, just to mix things up, I'm just going to do it because I'm getting a bit bored of saying I'm going to do something later. I'm giving myself too much work to do later. If I think namespacing all quest star things is worth doing, let's just do it now. Let's try it, see what happens. So that's going to become my micro commit. So I'm going to take uh, that and I'm going to say, I'll leave it actually there, and I'm going to say, jumping the gun, we're going to namespace quest. Okay, and then dot 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 that so that's what i'm trying to do now is namespace quests so let's take all uh, scripts that oh now this is interesting do i want to do i want to wrap quest state in a namespace state called quests probably because i want in the long term actually and should i call it quests or rpg.quest rpg.quest so let's go namespace rpg.quest quest quests don't know let's go look at something else what is it been in the singular in the plural before let's go to weapons go to a weapon script what did weapon config rpg.characters yeah so namespace rpg.quest let's do that because what i want to do at the top level is i want to make sure that we think about whether we should be allowed to talk to the questing system as a weapon for example if i'm in my weapon code do i want to be able to suddenly access something to do with quest do i want to be able to go quest state here well, I actually can't already because I've wrapped it in a, in, a, in a namespace. But no, I probably don't. I want to think very carefully before I type using Unity Engine or using RPG.quest, which will be available now if it's compiled. I want to think about that so that my very top level APIs between my weapon system, my weapon, you know, or any of this stuff, conversations, etc. I want to decide, do those systems really want to talk to each other? And one of the ways to keep myself honest to that is to namespace these things. And it's come about because I don't want to be prefixing loads of scripts with the same word that suggests they need to be in a folder, that folder is a namespace. So I'm going to put um, in front of everything to do with quests. So let's close all this down. It also happens to be in a file folder called Dialog and Quest, but that's nothing to keep me honest to that. Namespaces, there's a lot of compiler checks to keep me honest to it. So let's just namespace everything and the right thing as well. If you see me put namespace R a quest without rpg.quest like I just did on the previous class, then I did done a boo-boo. So I will unboo-boo that in a moment. Let's just go through them one by one. Conversations, are they about quest? Probably. So namespace rpg.quests, okay. And this is where we actually get to smoke out the crosstalk between the different parts of our solution already. So rpg.quests, rpg.quests, rpg.quests. Um, here we go. Namespace, rpg. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen, as I namespace away happily? Happily? Happily is like happily with a what, extra D in it. Uh, rpg.quests, not quest. 
Like so, and voice, I'm going to put that in the namespace as well. And then I'm going to check my namespaces. There's an easy way to do that. I'll show you in a second. There's lots of easy ways. I try not to use clever tools where we can help it because the fundamental way is that if I go to save all, which I don't need to because they're all saved, and I go using RPG dot, and then I get to explore my RPG sub namespaces. And I've only got quests. Good. So it looks like I did it right. I didn't leave any quest or anything else weird in there. Anyway, I'm going to go and look. Would it be too forward to ask? Oh, no, of course it would not be too forward to ask if you could create uh, contribute creating the quest chat icon asset quest chat no please do terabyte uh, anybody wants to create anything for I, I can't guarantee Rick will keep it in from an art direction and don't take it personally if he doesn't in fact I won't even tell him who created the assets or where they came from if that's okay the deal is if you guys want to make any assets for this if somebody wants to make a go and find out what the specs are and make an asset here for um these conversation and that's probably the same one actually terabyte but if we can have a resolution of it that, that works not only for the this speech bubble here which appears not only above people's head but in the icon i can't remember what the icon resolution is i think the icon is um 32 by 32 so we need a 32 by 32 with alfred back for what the cursor changes to. We need something of the, maybe twice that size, 64, 64, for the thing that appears above somebody's head. But there's also the this thing. We can actually customize that very thing right here so that when I right click and go RPG, uh, create a new conversation, we wanna use an icon there. Now, I don't know what the dimensions of that are, but you can see they're not the same. If you look up, find the dimensions and send me all three, you're amazing. But just to bear in mind that if, you, if it stays in the game, you'll get credited, you'll end up in the credits of the game and you'll be forever uh, sprayed gratitude over but if Rick doesn't want it from an art direction point of view it goes and there's no hard feelings are we good on that if we're good on that then I'm sure you can handle it you seem to on our on our, on our live chat you seem to be able to handle anything now what's broken everything's broken because of this name spacing it's good it's good that everything's broken why is it good because now we get to see what's trying to talk to what so the first one is the camera raycaster hmm Inside my blah, 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 blah. camera raycaster. Okay, let's go and open that. Oh no, let's not double click though. Let's just quit that one. Let's go to the camera raycaster, find the problem, and it's voice. So, why is the camera raycaster trying to talk to the voice component? Well, because it needs to understand the idea we've moused over somebody. Okay, well, I'm going to live with that. But at least I know now that the camera raycaster talked to RPG.quest, right? So here it smokes out the dependencies, the top level dependencies between my very modules, right? So the camera raycaster talks to characters and it talks to quests. All right, now we know that. Now let's just keep trying to keep trying to run the game. It won't run, by the way. Well, it may, because all the other code we wrote was inside the RPG.quest namespace, so it can talk to itself. Good. So the only actual consequence of that was was that, that we had to admit, that's what we're basically doing, admit that the camera raycaster has a dependency on RPG Quest. Cool, let's go look at the commit, uh, see what's happened there. Ah, oh, it's not a very good diff. We didn't do as much as it looks like we did. Okay, so then we're gonna create kill quest behavior. So that's good. So now if you were to go to the, uh, to the repo, here it is, then your stream eight branch will have the very latest commit i just did that second ago and if you have any trouble with that any of you viewers then ask and others i'm sure will help you but you can go to github and see exactly what lines of code i i done written just then if you want any grammar lessons come see me i know how to speak grammar because i is english and i is where language did come from and place to be all right so uh we namespaced woohoo should we do a namespace i was talking about dancing i was going to do a namespace dance which is going to be far too embarrassing and I think we should move our bodies. 40 minutes in is about the right amount of time. I've been standing up. I'm going to go to sitting. But before I do that, let's do some movings. So what am I using? A road podcaster. Okay, I'll just point it over this way. I'll maximize my thingy for a minute. Let's get ready to do a stretch. Don't just watch these guys. Just like the challenges. If you're going to take part in these streams, um, move yourself a bit, please. For your sake, not for mine. Um, I can't see you, right? So I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm not trying to do anything. Um, this is for you. So move somehow. Um, have I got sweaty armpits? Yes, that's embarrassing. Okay, well, we'll live with that. So here we go. It's very warm here. This thing, specifically trying to keep your hips fairly still, I think is very good. If you, if you can relax your back enough, you should be able to move your thoracic spine and get those vertebrae just moving. So that, that I think is good. 
We'll try and do one new stretch every time. How's that as a deal? So I may keep it more interesting. The other thing that I think is important is whichever mouse hand you've been using that you extend it out, palm down like so. And again, notwithstanding any previous injuries or superior body knowledge that you have, um, these are the things I'm recommending. Also, remember I keep saying that the acromion, which is part of your shoulder blade and your humerus head. Um, oh man, I should share on... Um, I should share complete anatomy sometime, but in the meanwhile, let me just quickly do this. Chromium, that's the chromium, it's a process on the shoulder there, and if we can get an image, what can happen, our humerus head, the top of that bone, uh, from your humerus, your arm there, sticks into the shoulder, and from a side view, you don't want your humerus head, I can't get a side view, what I need is a lateral view, so lateral view. You don't want your shoulder too far forward. It's really difficult to see on any of these, kind of here. Um, and you just don't want to sit with your shoulder too far forward. So start training your muscles to be, yes, yeah, squirrel, exactly, to be back here. Um, that's the chat icon we need. Squirrel, yes, you do need a squirrel chat icon. Where can we get one of those from? Um, we'll make one. Good idea, thank you. Squirrel chat icon. Okay, so uh, that's the shoulder. So make sure the shoulder's set back. There are exercises you can do, rubber bands and stuff like that. Um, and the new, ex new exercise for the day should be um, probably tree pose. So I'll go to a distance for that. I need to turn the camera down. This is the tree pose. Sam did it the other day. You stand like this. Like that. And just... And if you're at a standing desk, you can stand and work like that. Really good for your balance, helps you concentrate, and that's that. So end of squirrel, hopefully, with any luck. We can crack on now with the work at hand. So thank you. Congratulations. Gone. admit in the chat. Did you stretch? Did you not stretch? We'd be interested to hear. Well, we being me. I'm going to sit down, and then I'm going to crack on with the coding. Thanks for wearing pants, uh, Maul, Maul Ninja Max. You are welcome. Um, I tend not to, to show any hairy bits on uh, the streams, but yes. It might lead to mass unsubscriptions or something. Good job. Well done, stretching. Really important. So, where are we? Uh, well, that's why I pre-commit, because this is my anti-squirrel device. By the way, you know, if you, imp if you embed some of the habits and leave all the bad ones that I have, but if you embed some of the good habits um, that help me concentrate despite the fact that I'm running more than one business and focusing on the streams and on the code and, and trying to, to go from the, the details of, of, you know, where my semicolons are right up to how do we create hype for the upcoming, you know, Unity lighting course with a guy from Industrial Light and Magic and, and how, you know, what's happening with the Godot roller. I'm thinking across a lot of different levels of abstraction. So the tools that I use to make, keep myself focused, I think if you use them and then sit in a quiet room, you're going to even more be able to keep yourself focused. One really useful tool is a copy buffer. Um, having something that remembers a bunch of the things you copied. In my case, on the Mac here, it is called, uh, anyway, I don't know what it's called, copy clip, and I don't know if it's on the PC. Um, but that is pretty handy, because how often have you overwritten something in your copy buffer not you know, to then later want it? So create a quest kill behavior is what I'm doing, all right? So remember that these squirrels in conversation are like recursing a tree, right? So you go down one branch of a tree and you get squirreled, but you've got to be good at pulling your mind back to where you're, you're supposed to be. So squirreling is fine, provided you can pull it back. Yeah, you waste time, but then you also may be creating value down those side branches. That's my hallucination and my hope. All right, now we're going to be able to now detect when somebody dies. So I'm going to go to quest kill. By the way, should I rename all these classes to not have a quest um, a quest prefix in the name because at the end of the day we've got them namespaced, maybe, but not too worried right now. Copy clip isn't on the PC. Uh, you'll find one, guys. You PC guys, find, find yourselves uh, some clipboard managers. They're really cool. Oh, sending deets on what uh, later in the month? Squirrel, chat icon we need. Deets for what? Be interested to hear. Just going to down my, my camera a little bit. All right, so now how's this going to work? What I want a bit to do, let's let's take a <laughs> okay, let's make let's have a bit of fun with it. Let's uh, let's make a new quest, right? So the new quest is going to be that this guy tells us to escape the pen. This is going to be like this prisoner's dilemma. But this guy here is no longer going to tell you to find the bridge. He is going to tell you to kill 
somebody, and he's going to tell you to kill him. So his quest is going to be to kill him, and his quest is going to be to escape the pen, for me to escape the pen. It's like some weird love circle. Just to put some pressure on the architecture. So how does it even work? Well, do I need to change the thug's um, conversation? Yeah, I think I will. He says, uh, I ain't a thug. He says, ear mate, ear mate, uh, kill that there purple torsoed warrior and I'll give you a, what do you get in Super Mario? In Super Mario, you get a, a star, a power moon just for fun. Nothing to do with this game, but Rick's. Okay, and uh, the player says, sure, I'm on it. I'm just going to close that, put that window down. Does it matter? Yeah, it does. Hang on. Huh. There we go. Um. So, this dude is going to ask me to kill the other dude. So... How do we change the uh, the quest? Well, we need a new quest in the world, right? So the new quest in the world is just going to be a new game object that just has a simple quest script on it. So let's do that. Let's make a child game object. Let's call it Kill Purple Guy. Right, so let's put the kill quest detection on it. Do we also have to be close to him? Maybe. We'll do that later. Later we'll worry about how about if we have multiple quest completion criteria and can they all sing together and work together. Um, oh, what's this? This stream is order <laughs> two to the end. Uh, order two to the end. <laughs> what do you mean, perceptual? I mean, I know, yeah, I kind of know <laughs> what you mean. Uh, but just, just elaborate on that a little bit more because I'm quite interested in exactly what you mean. Anyway, kill quest. So... How did find the bridge work? No, I've got confused. That's the wrong type. So we need better naming. The fact that I made that mistake means we need better naming. Uh, kill, kill Purple Guy is a quest. It's currently available. Uh, we'll worry about started and complete and locked and stuff later. So it is a quest. All right. And it is there it is in the world. So therefore, this dude here needs to not have the quest find the bridge, but has to have the quest kill Purple Guy. So let's just go and select that game object and now he should issue kill purple guy which won't of course there's no completion criteria but we'll wire up the other side of that in a moment so this guy says kill purple guy if we look in the world escape the pen is available kill purple guy is started and uh, find the bridge is available good so that side of it has worked maybe for simplicity i will make two commits so what we did here is we created issue side as in the issuing side of the quest of quest kill okay and now we're going to create the uh, completion side of it you were talking about your squirrel being recursive yes recursive squirreling indeed I, we're going to stack overflow is what you end up with too much recursion so we're going to create um completion side of kill quest kill or quest whatever okay so we've done the issuing side this guy issues a quest because he's got a quest script and game object and stuff hopefully we see how the architecture is going together now i need on this guy to give him a quest kill completion component don't i i think and that makes sense he's the guy i want to kill so quest kill so now we've got to think how does quest kill how's quest kill going to signal back to the quest etc well if we take some inspiration from how the uh, zone based thing worked it worked like so we had a meadows at the bottom of meadows it's pretty cumbersome escape detector and what you had is on this quest thing is you link back to the actual game object so that kind of makes sense it's like okay well this dude here he is um, he's gonna have to serialize now I don't even have to think about what the type is I could just go and look at the quest collision thing for inspiration we serialize a quest quest to complete so we're starting to repeat ourselves so we're at some point gonna do something about that right have some sort of uh, super class or whatever and we're gonna put our serialize fields in the right place or or some other way of bringing this code out but it's only the second time I've done it don't mind copying something once you don't know there's a pattern until the third dot appears right so you no chance of proving a straight line until you have three dots 
So I think that's what's going on here. Now, we're going to have quest to complete. And a bit like the quest collision, we're going to say, well, what's the deal? Well, the deal is when the character attached dies. So this is going to require a component, this guy, isn't it? It, it requires, the concept of killing somebody requires a health system. So let's do that. Let's go require component. Um, and let's go type of. And let's go uh, health system. Now, why can't we see health system? Well, because we don't have the namespace. And it's the character namespace. So now we ask ourselves, does it make sense for the character namespace or for the, uh, the kill quest to have to know about characters? I think it does. Because you need to know something about the health of the character to know if he's died. So that's good. So this is now e eking out, smoking out the dependency, the top level dependency. As the solution gets bigger, we're trying to float the, 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 the architectural um, visualization of it, not as in like looking at a pretty building in, in, in Unreal, but the, how the architecture hangs together. We're trying to, we're trying to raise the level, right? And of course you start with the lines of code and you put them in functions and functions become, uh, and variables end up becoming classes and then classes end up in namespaces and then sub namespaces. And that's how we start to, um, in an actually compiler checked way, organize our code in, in, and be clear on what the architecture is without using String references. See what I did there? <laughs> Push the button. Oh, dear. Anyway, so what we need to do is the quest comes complete when the dude who's attached dies. So what we probably want to do is we want to avoid um, start on start. We probably want to go and find and keep a and keep a. Let's go for this MB header, which is this thing here. So we probably want to keep a cached reference to. No, we don't. Why am I caching it? And this is why I have this header. Why would I cache the health component? Why wouldn't I just go find it when I need it? Yeah, it's not taking much time. So let's just go find it. So let's not cache it on start. Let's not bother with that. Let's just think, how are we going to signal that this quest is complete? Well, how did we signal this quest was complete over here? We just did this. So that's what we're going to end up doing. And of course, this, this type of behavior could end up, both this and this could end up in a super class, right? Because this... Or, or some other way of separating it in a separate co component. Both the quest to complete and the idea of completing a quest, that is going to be common to every single one of these quest behaviors. So we're probably, these quest kill are going to start ending up inheriting from something like quest behavior. Not yet, not time. Let's, uh, firstly, we've got to detect the kill. Now, when are we going to detect the kill? On every update? Yeah, I don't see why not for the moment. So, um, and then whenever you do something on update and you're worried that you don't, you maybe shouldn't, um, well, then we'll make a to-do. So the to-do can go in before I even type the line of code. So to-do is to-do, uh, check speed. Okay, an update. Don't know, might be okay an update, might not be okay an update, probably is. Um, what are we going to do an update? We are going to check health now careful side effects of method names what are we actually doing here we're going to check health of host so check hell hell host so we're going to actually ask the question is host alive this is a better way of doing it so we're going to just have a boolean method okay that's going to return so let's have a look now it doesn't know to call it boolean because i haven't given it any context if i'd given it context if is host alive like this then what are we going to do? Um, let's just put this to do up here. Well, if the host is alive or if the host is dead, would read better, wouldn't it? So if the host is dead, then what are we going to do? Well, then we're going to do this line of code that I've lost because I haven't got a copy manager. Well, I have, but there. We're going to do this. We're going to go and find the quest journal and complete the quest. Okay, so that's cool. Now we just need an if host dead method. You see this kind of top down method of coding here? So let's generate is host dead. Now it knows it should be a Boolean. So no comments, no messing around. Um, I'm not even going to keep saying, let's check the speed, should it be an update? Don't worry about it. The performance profiler will tell us if there's a problem later. So I don't put private in front of update. I'm just, I'm, the way I'm signaling methods, messages is that they have no qualifier. Of course, they are private by default, but they're going to put no qualifier. We're going to put private in front of our own private methods and public in front of our own publics. So is this going to work? Don't know. Should I be looking at the chat? Probably. Hello, chat. Perceptual lucidity games. Hey, I love those icons. We'll make a squirrel in a minute. We could do that live on Twitch as a as a, as a break. Maybe uh, maybe on the hour when maybe this when this is working, I will make a squirrel live in Pixelmator Pro. If any of you guys have Macs, get Pixelmator Pro. I highly recommend it for creating this type of thing. Anyway, what am I doing? Is this guy dead? 
No, no, you see, because we don't have it. The is host dead doesn't even work. But um, let's just check it gets called. That's a good thing about the throw not implemented exception. Let's see when it's getting called. You clip the sound bite, thanks to Revise, we will never live it down. Clipping and sharing those clips on social media or somewhere is really cool and giving the clips a good name so that when people get to the place they can find it. So kill the purple guy. And there you go, the requested feature is not implemented in every frame it's now checking to see if I've killed the purple guy. Well I haven't, but it's really easy to go and do that now. So I like these throw not implemented exceptions. I like the way it does that. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna just go and get component, health system. Okay, um, and then we're going to go get uh, current health or get health, health, health as percentage. Oh, so I did that like as a property, right? So I'm just going to say, um, let's, let's put ourselves something self-documenting. VAR, argue about it all you like. I like VAR, generally works, apart from when it didn't in the last, <laughs> earlier on in the, in the stream. Remember when we were trying to do something here, if I said VAR child in, uh, in, in Quest Parent, then it, ha it didn't, this didn't work. You couldn't do child dot game object. You couldn't do that when this was var child, interestingly. Anyway, so I'm going to do a quick uh, intermediate variable. What is this thing I'm trying to get? This is the uh, health of, I'm going to call it the host. Host, um, and it equals that. That's the health of the host. Now, does this come back as a float? Of course it will. Uh, oh, a single. Was it a single? Single precision floating point number. Okay, fine, float. Um, so now we say if health of host, am I going to do less than zero? Why aren't I doing less than zero? Come on, just quick pop quiz. Make sure you guys are up to it. What's wrong with that? I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. Naughty. In fact, I'm going to write, I'm going to have to do this on. So if health of host is less than or equal to zero, F, ding. Okay, why is that naughty? You guys will tell me in the chat in a second. Then, um, well, return true. So actually, we don't even need to return true. What we can do is just return this. We can just go return health of host. And you're, now you're going to tell me, because the binary representation of sign floats is unreliable. Yeah, I would say less than or equal to mathf.epsilon probably. Is that a good good answer? Is that a good thing to do? I think that's a good thing to do because we don't know, you shouldn't really compare them to, uh, what's wrong with that? I think it just can't parse this expression. Mm -hmm. ah, and I can't write return. And it probably could parse that expression if I could type return. Beautiful, okay, is that all right? You guys happy with that? Health of the host is that thing, just as a kind of intermediate variable for self-documentation. And then if the health of the health, is, that thing is less than or equal to mathf.epsilon, just in case it's super tiny, but so small that it's a floating point rounding error, or if it's somehow become negative because of a big jump in health, then the dude is dead. Now let's, does, let's does see if it done worked. Intentional verbal slips, by the way. So I'll go get this quest, kill purple guy, and I speak to the purple guy, and he says, escape the pen. Now, I can't kill him, can I? Because I can't attack him. Huh. You see, architecturally, how that suddenly made me go, oh, or in a lower pitch voice, oh, um, I can't now attack him. So I failed. So now we get the new sound effect from Yan. Okay, that's quite annoying. But um, yeah, so I can't kill him, which, is, which isn't great. So let's simulate killing him. I want to get what I'm trying to do done. Of course, we've got a new thing. So, so next, we need to uh, allow attack during convo. Question mark. Do we want to? We may not want to. Rick may say we don't need it. Then I just go and put that on the guy that hasn't got any. I go put the kill condition on somebody who hasn't got any uh, dialogue. But in the meantime, I'm going to click this dude, and I'm going to give him zero health points. <laughs> is that going to work? It thought it would. It should just work, actually. Oh, no, 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 look, I'm changing the max health points. Uh, and we won't have exposed the actual health points right now. And I don't have any debuggy way of killing him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to not make it this guy that I'm killing. All right. So it's not quest kill on him. And also, I need to link the, the thing to somebody. Let's take just I'll duplicate him. We talked about in the dialogue, this guy over here, he's the guy I'm going to kill. And we're going to give him a quest kill. And we're going to tell him the quest we want to complete is the kill quest. 
cool purple guy. And that might even work. Be lucky. You can change it if you set the inspector to debug mode. Hmm. Good point, that man. I think you can change it if you set the inspector to debug mode. Whoa, look at that. Too much stuff. Um, no, because of its level of protection. But a good idea. Not a bad idea to try debug mode. I'm going to take it out of debug mode just because it's kind of scary. Uh, and let's go, kill, let's go kill this guy. Now, I can't kill this guy. Why can't I kill this guy? Because this guy's still got a... What's he got on him? He should have an enemy AI or I won't be able to kill him. And he should not have a voice script. Let's just remove that. Boom. So he has, he has enemy AI controlling him, but no voice now. So he should be evil and nasty and wanting to kill me now. Or me wanting to kill. Oh, no, hold on. I've got my quest. Go get the quest. Uh, who's giving me the quest? This dude. Kill the purple guy. All right, let's go kill the purple guy. It'd be really exciting if this works. Let's also click on the kill the purple guy quest here. It started. He's not really defending himself, but then he hasn't got any weapons. So, Oh, dude, purple guy, you are useless at defending yourself. But then I didn't really compose you in such a way that you... Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, hang on. I think that worked. In my scrolling around the hierarchy, kill... Ah, is that satisfying? Clipped my... Oh, okay. You said Yan is annoying, but it's fine. I've known him for probably over 30 years. That's not good. Dudes, that worked. I killed the purple guy and, 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 and bounce, bounce, bounce. It worked. Yeah, that, is that exciting? Oh, kill the purple guy, escape the pen, leave the pen. I've escaped the pen, twat the purple guy. When I twat the purple guy, that gets completed. This is good. I think at this point in your in your development, it's really important you give yourself an endorphin here. And one of the ways you can do that, or whatever the neurochemical is, neurotransmitter, boom, something like this. Woo! Okay, even if it's a small win, celebrate all small wins. You just feel better about yourself. You feel slightly embarrassed doing that on online when 37 people are watching, but it's also fun. So let's, uh, we've done it, it worked. Uh, and uh, thank you for your help. Let's go commit. So complete Create completion of quest kill. We did. It worked. So we can kill. Awesome. So I'm going to do a third to make sure the pattern. Otherwise, you guys, I'm sure, pick me up and say, oh, you don't know that this, this architecture works until you've got a third way of killing people. Well, let's go get a third way of killing people. Where's my little list of ways of killing people? It was on the first thing that I made, which was quest collision. We've done kill. Um, so I can delete it from the list, really. Delivery. What is an RPG delivery quest? Is that take something somewhere? Now you see, my, now, look, this is what's going on. I'm like, oh, that sounds complicated. There's too much uncertainty. Now I have a choice. Do I avoid it because it's uncertain and complicated and hence become a weak and useful, useless person? <laughs> I'm kidding. Or do I go at it because it's, it, it depends. It depends, right, on how much energy I feel like I've got, whether this is the time to go at something or the time to just kind of move forward. Right now, I feel like I, I want to go at it. I don't really know what a delivery quest is, but let's work it out together. Um, yeah, item retrieval, and let's go get that done. Let's, let's eat the frog in this particular heart case. Now, remember that the little adage that somebody else clipped and shared. I'm not sure why, but they seem to like it, and it's not mine. I think I got it from T. Harvecker, um, American dude who talks about wealth very eloquently. Um, he said, if you do what, or somebody said uh, before him, if you do what's easy, life will be hard, but if you do what's hard, life will be easy. So it's kind of paradoxical, but just think about working out. Yeah, it's hard at the time, makes your life easier later, a bit less time in the ER. Um, if you take the stairs rather than taking the lift, then life becomes easier later. The other distinction on that is do what makes you feel good, but about yourself. That's the bit to add to the end. So if you're sat there and there's the stairs or there's the lift, yeah, what would feel good in the moment would be to take, in the very moment, would be to take the the lift, right? Because it's just easier. It feels better than running up the stairs and getting sweaty. But you'll feel better about yourself if you took the stairs by the time you get to the top. So if you continually do what makes you feel better about yourself, your self-confidence will grow and your ability to affect the world and your own future will grow. Anyway, self-development over. I should have an end, end, um, end pep talk like this. End pep talk. Closing tag. How's that? So we can have pep talk and end pep talk. We can have our own kind of BSML. Yeah, so that's uh, Ben's stream or something else. Markup language. Yeah, that'll do that. All right, so uh, where am I? I've completely lost track. Quest, okay. So what we're going to try and do is a delivery quest next. That sounds scary. Try delivery quest. Now I've got to do a refactor, haven't I? Because I'm not going to let myself have three classes that do 
that have this line of code about quest to complete and this line of code about complete the quest. So let's go refactor. Um, and it will also make things a little bit more um, self-documenting. So before that, I'll leave that there. I'm going to create a quest trigger, quest behavior, quest completion, quest completion. I think I like parent class. So let's use inheritance again. I seem to be getting into this inheritance lock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move things around archy, choky, texturally. Let me see if I can get Vilq up so I can draw my screen so everybody's pretty clear on what we're doing. What I am doing is we've currently got a quest collision, was it? I can't remember. Yeah, quest collision. And um, we've got quest kill here. Whoa, whoa, that's what I intended to do, exactly. Um, and quest kill. And they both inherit directly from mono behavior, right? Like so, um, at the moment. And therefore, we're ending up with repeating code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a quest completion class that goes from mono behavior. Then I'm going to inherit quest completion and quest... Oh, that's confusing. Quest collision, quest collision, and, um, and quest kill. Okay, I'm just going to inherit them so we can start putting all the shared code in there. And if you think that's a bad idea, um, tell me. Yes, I know I closed it first, Ando Productions. Thank you very much for telling me. I've got to get my BSML. <laughs> BSML. Oh, dear. That's quite funny. It's like a, it's like the Flinsterfner from uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Pe Peoples. He had the BSUSB, didn't he? The, the uh, whatever BS stands for. Can't say it on a stream. We're not marked for mature audience. Stands for Ben Stream. Markup language. And yes, I should have closed it first. Opened it before I closed it. All right. Uh, so I'm going to inherit because I'm man enough to do that. And um, I kind of... If you do a lot of uh, a lot of composition, if you're doing composition throughout your solution, extension by composition, then start doing some inheritance. Try it on for size. It's a quest completion criteria, super classy thing. And then what I'm going to do in this quest criteria that stuff, I'm going to take the quest to complete and take it out of here. And oh, hang on, schema migration. Let's be careful. Let's try and not lose what is set in the inspector. So where we have blah, 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 like this dude, this new enemy that I made. How can, why can't I select him? Because of the UI element in the foreground, I bet you. It doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter if I go completely off the cards. Where have I gone? Here. So this dude, I managed to select him. Uh, the quest here, which is the quest to complete, I don't want that, to, to, that data field to disappear. So I'm going to make the quest completion superclass first and see if we can do the data migration without losing information that's serialized. So it's going to have a uh, quest, quest to complete. Why is quest in red? Because we're not using uh, RPG. Dot, ah, using or adding? Good question. It's part of the RPG. So using would work to give us access to this, but it's not the right thing to do. What we want to do is we want to namespace RPG.quests. Uh, like so, namespace it up like that. Boom. OK, cool. So uh, the quest to complete. We also may as well have a method in here that we call. I know this always just does that. But we may as well just put that code in one place. So I'll do that in here. I'll refactor it out. Um, which way around? Well, this doesn't matter. There's no schema migration, no data migration to do. So I'm going to do one thing at a time. I'm just going to make sure that quest to complete moves down to the uh, up to the superclass. So let's just go and get the two things. Quest collision. We don't longer need to serialize quest to complete. Let's see what that does. Lean before we do both of them. So this was quest collision. So I need to go look at the meadow. And I need to go and find the escape detector. Uh, no, no, it's not. It's issued by, you know, that's it. Quest to complete, escape the pen. Seem to work, um, apart from the scripts have not compiled, so you cannot assume that it has worked. So where is quest to complete? Um, quest to complete should be available. It's not available because I have not yet changed the inheritance to quest completion. Now, so I've moved the inheritance of quest collision um, from quest to, to quest completion. Now, this quest to complete should be available now. It depends on the protection level, right? So let's have a look at this. Uh, serialized field will make it private. Ooh, can I also say protected? Don't know, never tried that before. Serialized field protected if I type right, quest, quest to complete, so that the subclasses can do it. Thank you very much, Perceptual Lucidity. If it wasn't for, yeah, inheritance is beautiful, and yeah, it can be. It can be. I agree. 
Why would, why would I not agree with one of my most loyal fans? Okay, so let's see if this schema migration with data migration worked. Does the collision box still remember which quest it's completing? Even though I moved that quest to complete data to the superclass, it does. Look at that. So you see how I thought about that before I just deleted the serialized field? Because you can bet a pound, I can bet you a pound a pinch of what's it, that had I deleted straight from here, um, on the quest collision, this serialized field before I created it in the superclass, I bet you that it would have lost the information, which wouldn't have been brilliant when you have lots and lots of stuffs going on. All right, so the other thing we want to do is get this out, this find object of type, because that's going to be used in different places. So we want to just make something in the superclass that is simply a protected uh, complete quest. And it doesn't actually need to take any parameters because the superclass knows what the quest is. So we just have a complete quest, uh, it doesn't return anything. And then wherever you need it, you just call complete quest. So instead of that, much easier to read, just call complete quest, boom. How's that? Is that good? Is that bad? Is it ugly? I don't know, it's something. So what does quest kill do? Well, in quest kill, we delete the serialized field. In fact, we delete all this stuff at the top for the moment. And then now where we complete the quest, we just say complete quest. Nice and, oh, that's not very nice. What happened? Well, we haven't inherited from the right place. Ah, probably broken. Hang on, let's try this, okay? So it doesn't matter if quest kill uh, loses the information. Uh, this particular case, I've saved it, but it, will it compile right now? Probably not. I think whether we break, whether or not we break the, uh, the link here, the data on this guy, uh, or this guy even, it's gonna depend whether it can compile. If it does compile, then I think that this dude back here stuck behind the UI element will have lost his Is it him? Yeah. What's wrong? Why, why? Well, it has lost the field, so it will have lost the data. It's lost the field because it managed to compile since I deleted the serialized field. Can you see what's going on there? So that's why that the correct sequence would have been to, um, to inherit this from quest completion. You might want to, uh, you might want to clip this. It's very useful information about, about not losing the data that you've set up in the inspector. Um, what we wanted to do here is to, is to, Make sure that the superclass has, the parent class has the serialized field that we need in it, that it's protected serialized field like that. And then in the, in the child class, class, you wanna then inherit from that, from quest completion, so that the field is available through inheritance. Then you can delete your serialized field from here and then you don't lose any data, okay? In this case, I have lost data, but I've done it consciously. What matters is whether it's conscious. Now, if you had a thousand enemies out there, all of which were linked to this quest, uh, you would be, what's the word, pissed off, I think, right now about losing that. That's why I'm thinking about that sort of stuff for you. So you guys don't have to. You won't have to think at all by the time we finished with you. So kill the purple guy quest. Now that's not dragging in. For whatever reason, we're having bad drag times at the moment, not as in dressing up like women in it all going wrong, but bad UI drag times. Let's try kill the purple guy. And why is this better? Oh, because I don't have any repeating code. That's why it's better. And we're going to do a like diff stat in a minute and see how many lines of code different we are. Click, click, click. Come on. I should have just turned his health down. In fact, I will just turn his health down. Okay, that worked, completed the quest. I'm gonna turn his health down so that next time we never have to click him that many times. Maximum health points, two is what I feel like giving him. No, seven, nobody ever uses the number seven and I like prime numbers. I think we should celebrate prime number birthday. Squirrel, by the way, we do need a squirrel thing. We'll do that in a second. We'll do that in a second, but not till we've got this functionality work. So we're gonna try the delivery quest next, but we did, we created a quest completion parent class. Good, that is, that is good news. So is everything saved over here? Looks like it. The other way of telling is there's no save all highlighted. Commit that. Now I'm going to do a diff stat. I'm going to see how many lines of code. It will have added lines of code because that's it. when you first do a refactor like that, you're going to have an increase in the number of lines of code and for, for, in return for a future decrease in the number of lines of code and number of mistakes. So I'm going to pre-commit my next action, which is try a delivery quest. So actually, let's do that. Let's set up... Um, well, setting up, no, setting up the issue side of the delivery quest, issuing the quest will be super easy. So let's just try the whole thing in one chunk. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, I wanna see what happened. I think because the uh, we only made a single change here, from here to here, I think if I do a git diff stat, it is gonna automatically tell me the difference between these two. And sure, I can look in here in source tree, but I prefer to do this, git stat minus minus diff. And then if it's gonna show me everything, which doesn't give me a very nice summary. Oh, nice. So is it? Git diff minus minus stat, probably. Yeah, it's a diff 
minus minus, give me the stats. And then while we're here, let's just say, show me the C sharp. Nice. So that didn't work. So what we are going to need to do is tell it which commit we want to do it in comparison to. So I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut. Get diff. Yeah, exactly. The right. I give exactly the right command. I just missed the SHA. 23 insertions, 16 deletions. Okay, so four, five, six, seven lines, seven additional lines of code. And we are in good shape to move forward. Let's start getting some of the dividends of that paid off. By the way, let's at this stage, a squirrel again. I'm definitely getting a squirrel sound. What is a squirrel sound? Hmm. Um, I'm going to see how we've done overall this stream. So let's just grab the SHA of there and uh, see what we've done this stream so far. Diff stat. Oh, no, I need to do it this way. Diff stat. Can't just repeat the last command because they're different chars. We have added 186 lines of code and removed 103. That's not bad going. I've written 83 lines of code. Thank God for all the boilerplate when you make a new class. Otherwise, it would look like I haven't done anything. All right, let's do it. Let's make a new collect. So tell me, guys, about these delivery delivery things. It's a chatter. It's a chitter. Oh, a chitter. Oh, no, that was horrible. I sounded like Hannibal Lecter then with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Not good. Not good. I'll never make that sound again. You can hold me to that. Have you heard that saying? I'll try it with my wife. If I told you you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? It's kind of the play on words between like holding the principle against me. But anyway, um, delivery type quest. When, like, when you wanted someone to get you a coffee, that type of thing. A squirrel sound. Thank you very much for that, Terra Vice. Very important addition to the stream. We better make... Ah, oh, yeah. Now, from a copyright point of view, standard YouTube license, can I just grab that? I guess I can't. Can somebody find me a copyright-free squirrel sound to go with my squirrel emote? You can't really have a sound with a emote, can you? Oh, that's cool. I'm not sure how many people would identify that as a squirrel. Anyway. Uh, the delivery quest. Thank you, Terra Vice. I appreciate it. Um... Do we, we have to have something to deliver the something, right? So now, oh no, don't make me cross talk into inventory. I might be backing out of a delivery quest in a minute because otherwise we're going to have to have something to deliver it and we haven't set up inventory yet. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to learn from the fact that, no, that's too much right now. So delivery after, uh, example, other quest criteria, let's just... In fact, I'm going to move this um, quest completion to the quest completion cl class, this information, because that's where it makes the most sense. I'm going to put this comment here because I think that's where it makes a lot of sense. And then let's just go like this. Delivery uh, after, after inventory. Uh, gather. Tell me about gather in a minute. Escort. Oh. Uh, guest stroke solve. Combo. We should be able to do combo. We could try combo next. We could try and see if we can deal with crosstalk between two different criteria. That seems overly complicated. Uh, can you fake an inventory thing like we did with the weapon? Could we kind of mock it up or stub it or fake it or something? Probably a good idea. Yeah, we could. We could. We could kind of mock up and start thinking. The thing is that to actually start creating the inventory API, I'd rather be actually creating inventory. Gather. I like gather. Let's just, just excuse me if I just change my mind. Let's just do gather and then do delivery when we get closer to inventory. In fact, let's just move that, that down. And the final thing would be combo uh, if, if required. And I'm going to say out Rick like that. So let's do gather next, right? for me backing out the corner because I'm scared. It's not really that I'm scared. I just I just want to I want to touch the inventory API when we start doing inventory. We're not there yet. So try gather quest. Okay? Same thing, only different. Forgive me for being I'm not sure what the word is, wet probably. It's too big a frog to eat. Yeah. Gather would still Yeah, gather may terrorize lead to inventory. But at least we could complete the quest and then go, ah, well, now we need inventory. We're getting close to needing inventory. We, we, you, you see, this is the point of the lean development, right, is that now we know that we need to go to inventory sooner. We don't need to finish and polish quests. We should, we should go to inventory soon. It's kind of like, it's the same thing. Third time, third time you need to have inventory, we do inventory. So once we needed inventory, 
deliver. So I moved it down the list. Fine. Now gather. Maybe we need inventory. So maybe we move gather down, you know, just before just before inventory. And, you know, this is going right in the code, nicely self-documented. We know exactly when this came up in the conversation. It will be in the version control. I can do an at Rick. You can search the code base for that. It's in, you know, kind of this way of working makes sense, makes sense to me, particularly at our team size, which ain't big, is it? Let's be honest, all of us. So a guess stroke solve. I don't know if we ever need that. Um, that's another if required Rick. So if required Rick. And then I think escort then. What does an escort mean? It means I take somebody. Oh, that'd be fun. And that's nothing to do with inventory. That's like I go to an NPC and they follow me. Ooh. Because that's going to put good pressure on the architecture. And they follow me because I have that quest active. And then that'll have a cross feedback to dialogue. Hmm. We could track the gather delivery items from the class now with a to-do. Yeah, yeah, lots of places. You could do lots of stuff. So um, I only need one to-do here. So other quest criteria, to-do. Huh, how's that? And we'll actually clear out our to-dos at some point. Anyways, I probably need a break. You know, this would be a good time to have a break before I need a break. It's an hour and 20 minutes of coding and talking. And I haven't had a break. So I'm going to go for a break. I'm not going to take you guys through a stretch this time. And then when I come back, we are going to try an escort quest. All right. So I'm just going to commit the notes. So deciding on order of quest or order to tackle quest. Quest types. So that's what we just did. Here's the repo. Dink. And then once that's done, I'm going to paste this in and go for a quick break. And I'll leave a burb on the screen of some description. Oh, now I've lost it. But that's why you have these things. Uh, oh, I never copied it. Oh, yes. No, no. It's try escort quest. That's going to be fun. That's going to be really fun. So escort quest when we get back. Let's put myself up something. What's going to be better than a nothing? I should really get myself a slide, shouldn't I? I should make a nice... A nice slide up with game dev TV, and um, yeah, I think I'll do that. And uh, what comes next in this stream? Or I just stop the stream and start again. How long's the stream been going? An hour and twenty. Yeah, no, I stop the stream and start again. That's much easier. And then, sp then, um, yeah. But if you see the, the 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 videos on demand just get huge, don't they? So, is it not a good idea to just stop and start? We keep having this yeah, having this conversation every time. But uh, yeah, I think I'll just start again in about five minutes at about half past. We'll try that for this time. And uh, I'll be back. I'll go for a little walk, get up from your machines, whatever you're doing. If you're at work, naughtily listening to this when you should be working. Oh, you lose all the chat history. Uh, would I? I'll still see the chat history if I stop the stream on both my, uh, both my machines. Okay. Uh, well, if other streamers do it, I'll do it. You guys are suggesting I stay. So I'm going to make up a quick um, thing, but not right now. I'll put it on my list. A quick kind of, I'll be back, and this is what we're doing when we're back. Back soon slide, like so. And watch it. Okay, fine. You guys, you, you guys know. So let's just do an ugly text edit. Be back within 10 minutes. We'll be creating an escort quest architecture. Not quest after that. Okay, and then make the font lots bigger. And uh, that's it, I think. Back within 10 minutes, nice and big. And I could leave the RPG on in the background, couldn't I? Bit of RPG music. Okay, cool. I will see you guys shortly. Yeah, I thought we might get into jokes about an escort service. Ah. Ha. Sorted. See you soon.
do that I can. Okay. It's warm in here. Wow. I think Windows is the solution. Not MacOS, but Windows. I am going to go and open Windows. That's what I'm going to do. And then I will finish my break. Now we can do... Um, no, I won't change the mic. I'm just going to go and open a window. You can... can have a sneak peek of the trampoline, though. Oops, if I can make this work. Oh, that's never going to work. Oh, well. Too bright out there. Probably do something about it somehow. Skibbity bibbity, where is it? Uh, it's me having fun, having a break. Uh, it's not working. Lumix Tether, you fail me. Let's try once more. Currently just a follower, as long as I've been following for 10 minutes. Oh, I see this format had a chat. Yeah, that's how you chat. Let's go. F lots, smaller aperture, bigger number for whatever reason. You've got to love cameras. There you go. There's the trampoline. That, if you guys want to see me trying to kill myself on that, then let me know. I can arrange to take, I can even try and wear a radio mic uh, while I'm, ooh. Ooh, hang on. That, no. Yes, maybe. Let's try something. Let's continue the chat, uh, the break, for just another couple of minutes. Let's go get out of breath. Let's see if this works. Live trampolining from here, live and direct, furthermore. Ah, look, that's well in focus. And with a little bit more F numbers. Maybe a little bit faster shutters. Oh, slower shutters. Okay. Uh, and maybe a bit more down sampling on the... This actually might be a perfect viewpoint for this. Why, what am I out of? I'm out of... No, I need a higher shutter speed, don't I? Obviously get it dim there you go now it can now it can auto adjust how it wants to this real quick this may not work but i'm going to put a i'm going to put a mic pack on my belt and just see if we can do stupid trampoline stunts whilst live on the stream hmm what could possibly go wrong let's see if my little mic thing is bouncing hello it is. If I do that, and in theory you can still hear me. Yes. Stick this on my shirt. Uh -huh. Then if I get my phone, which I need to go and get in the other room anyway, this is. Can you guys still hear me? I'm talking through a radio mic now. In theory, this might actually work. It might not. Tell me in the chat if you can hear me. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Then you might get some nasty interference in a minute, but it, it shouldn't last as I get closer to the office again. So excuse any nasty interference if there is any. Um, I'll get, I need to get my phone. I need to find my phone. Okay. For find my iPhone. Oh, oh, I can hear it pinging. This is where I walk around the house aimlessly with a ping, pushing a button on my watch that makes my phone ring. And I know you might be getting bad audio, but it'll get better in just a second. There we go. Now, if we go to Twitch on my phone, this is be a fun way to have you guys join me for a break. Happened to the pack. Muggy getting well out of range now. So I'm surprised if there's horrible, horrible noise right now. The dashboard, the chat, open the door. Unable to connect to the chat. Uh, Happy to verify your account. Whatever. Okay. Boo. Firstly, can you hear me? And secondly, can you see me? I'm in the garden, having my break, um, with a radio mic on. <laughs> you can, okay. Awesome. On both. Okay, so we're going to try four things. We're going to try a forward somersault going forward, a backward somersault going backwards, and then the other two permutations, because we as programmers. I'll be back. Not the best camera view for this, but it's a camera view. And, uh, well, I'll be back if my neck is in one piece. 
Here we go. I'm also not really dressed for it. It's really strange to think you're out there somewhere, you guys. Through that office window, kind of through a piece of wood. But anyway, I think you can see me. Here we go. Backwards somersault, traveling backwards. Live on Twitch. Go. Boom. Ah. Traveled most of the length of the trampoline. OK, forwards somersault, traveling forwards this time. Boom. Whoa. That's why we have a net. <laughs> Nobody clip that, please. Whew. OK, then it's a backwards somersault traveling forward, which I'm told is called a gainer. Let's try this. Don't like this. And I will whoop. Woo! Because it feels great. And then the worst, which is a forward somersault traveling backwards. Wish me luck. It feels bad. Oof! Uh, wipe out fusion. Okay, I've got to do that one again. I can't live that down. Forward somersault, traveling about six foot backwards. Oh no! It's got to be done. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Here we go. Yes! Okay, back to the RPG. Escort quest, here we come. <sighs> Hope that was fun. It's definitely work, working my brain up. Um, I'm going to walk around the side of the office and hope that I left my water in there. Whew. Anyway, that was daft. Uh, thanks for joining me. I'll be back. Have any of you guys seen The Shining? Here's Johnny. That must be pretty scary. Don't clip that either. Okay, um, I'm on my way back in. And I appreciate you. This is how I break, you know. So this is how I roll. If this is how I roll, I'll just roll like it. Okay. Audio source change. Um, so there you go. How was that? A bit of fun, I think. Let's open up the aperture, which is not an editing program, although it is a good editing program. Oh, you're starting to recognize each other on the chat. Oh, this is fun. This is scrolling up and down this. Come on. Stop it, mouse wheel. Kinetic mice wheels, mouse wheels is. Gotta love them. Gotta have a shutter speed that is a non, that is not an integer multiple of your mains, your electricity. Otherwise, you're gonna get this weird strobing effect, rolling shuttery stuff. Um, okay, all looks good. Let's minimize this down. You don't wanna see me panting. Switch the mic back to the road. Here we go. Three, two, one, road podcaster, go. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, that's cool. So yeah, I'm an old duffer, but not over the hill yet. We will have more stupid physical stunts later, possibly involving trees. Um, what else could it involve? High, very high trees, radio controlled airplanes, or walking down flights of stairs on one's hands. Anyway, crazy stuff, inbound. I'm really too hot now, um, but it's okay. We'll survive. Switch the mic packs off. Is this mic much worse, by the way? So just by way of comparison, before, before I do turn the mic packs off, because if, you know, if, if there's not much in it, in terms of your experience, then I'll use the other mic pack, the radio one. So just tell me real quick, guys. There's the Rode Podcaster, or there's the radio mic. So this is the radio mic. Um, not a ton worse. Mic pack found it sounded fine. Okay, so, I mean, I'm going to go with the Rode, because I don't have any batteries to worry about, but it's good to know if I forgot to change back, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Right. Has the stream been all right, guys? We had so many problems. I guess it's going to, by the way, it's going to depend on the quality of the sound. It's going to depend on whether you're on headphones or not, I think. If you're on headphones, you're going to hear the presence of the road a lot more. Um, rock solid zero issues. This is super good news hey tpb live welcome thank you for being here and numb to nuts thank you very much for subscribing can i do a search for who's subscribed recently yes hi i'm temmy um and numb to nuts thank you very much you two for subscribing here um i'm just going to put in the tier two benefits just in case you guys think that that, that is worth it they're the tier two benefits get your twitch channel listed on our front page an extra emote coming soon as soon as i can keep up it might be the squirrel and <laughs> You support us 240% higher. Cool. We might also do Streamlabs donations for what they're worth just to try and further support these streams. Should I do donations, yes or no? 
I'm not going to ironically put up a paid poll to ask you whether I should do donations. That would be silly. All right, so where am I? Um, Cambridgeshire, that is it. Try Escort Quest. Okay, not the type of escort some of you are thinking about. Quest Kill, uh, Quest Completion, Quest Collision. I don't like these things all starting with the name Quest. I'm going to... I love getting rid of stuff that's previously in multiple places. So I'm going to rename all of these just Collision because they're namespaced, right? And they're in a folder called Dialogue and Quest. So why do I need the word Quest in front of all of them? Only in front of Quest Completion, I think. And then I'm going to make a new class called Escort in the RPG namespace and we'll be good. So I've renamed all three classes. Let's go into the code and just rename the classes in here using the rename tool. Boom, that's that one. Not journal, but kill. So remember, name, rename your class, by the way, work, may be worth clipping. If you want to rename a class in Unity without anything breaking, rename the file in the Unity editor first, then come over to Visual Studio and do the, the rename of the class inside there, okay? That's the order you want to do it in. Journal. Oh, did I really want to lose Quest Journal? Maybe. I think we're okay. So let's save all. Just check it all works. Hi, Abin, 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 Ab, 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 Hinegi, or something. Don't know, it's a cool name. Now, reference. Now, what happened there is that you do need to be careful when you rename classes. When you do rename classes, you are, and this is why people end up not renaming. So it's worth knowing this stuff and getting onto this stuff. Something uh, is busted. So somebody who's got a voice, um, this dude here, has lost a... I'm not even sure where the instance is broken here. Voice, voice 55, object reference not set to an instance of an object. Yeah, so which one's broken? So these are the disadvantages of name, renaming things, but you need to be able to rename to keep your names nice. So it's better to understand the ups and downs and ins and outs of renaming. I'm surprised that doesn't work. Surprised we're getting a null reference exception there. Null reference exception to voice. So let's follow it through. Camera Raycaster calls the Camera Raycaster, calls the voice script, calls voice 55. Well, let's go look at it. And you go, oh, why did he bother renaming? Because renaming is really important. Find object of type Quest Journal. Ah, it looks like I didn't do a proper rename of Quest Journal. I think that Quest Journal has become renamed to just Journal, and that will be the problem. So let's just do that. So don't shy away from it, right? There's two ways to go there. Oh, I just won't bother renaming. Maybe. Oh, is that right? Journal, yeah, what's wrong with that? Nothing, I would ignore that. Okay, quest journal cannot be found. The type of namespace quest journal can't be found. Where in quest completion 30. So uh, here, because we haven't yet saved the file. Remember, after a rename, save all. I always tell you that, and then I didn't do and done it. Okay, I think it'll work now. So do rename, do persist with that, do get good at it, because it's kind of important. All right, now we have managed to do the rename. Worth worth doing, dropping a quick commit? Why not? Re Remove quest prefix from several classes. Why? Because I didn't like them there. And you don't want to shy away from renaming. Slippery slope, guys. Once you start saying, oh, let's not rename because it's hard, you'll stop renaming. Your names will start sucking. Your code will start sucking. Don't do it. All right. So now I'm finally in a position to create a new thing called... You know what I've done here? I've got quest completion. It's called question completion. So here comes another rename. This is how you rename a class. You go to it. You rename the file. You go into the file in Visual Studio. You go find the new thing. You go find the file. You use the rename tool. OK. This should do data migration in the inspector as well. You go to save all. And then as a double check, provided, the, provided your game doesn't take ages to spin up, which it shouldn't. You should always be able to play the game quickly, by the way. Uh, then you're in good shape. All right, good. So I've done that. I'm not going to commit that. So uh, at last, I'm in a position to make a new kind of C-sharp script. Now, it's going to inherit from something. Remember that work we did on the inheritance. It's going to be called Escort. And by the... Oh, Escort. Now I've made a naming error. So in this case, it's quicker to just delete the script. If you make a script and you misname it in the beginning, just delete it. If you've done nothing else, just, just delete it. And then I'm going to make a folder as well.
Am I going to make a folder for these different types? Yeah, I think I am. Qu quest completions. Quest completions, I'm going to call it. Or quest completion. And I'm going to put in the idea that it's the quest completion superclass, the kill, the escort, and the collision. Just because that's much clearer for, for Rick as to what they're going on going on here. Now, you could also go uh, uh, namespace RPG dot, um, quests dot completion and you could go that far if you wanted to in terms of namespacing i'm avoiding going three levels deep in terms of namespaces at the moment because i think that is um well the technical term i tend to use is disappearing up your own bottom but it's not a very nice technical term so going over the top is a different way of saying it so uh collision escort kill and quest completion should all be in there they're not moving and they are moving good so it's escort we just made. Let's go and inherit escort from the right place. Which class does it inherit from, guys? Well, we just look at the rest, don't we? Collision looks goes from quest completion. Kill comes from quest completion. Quest completion is the super class, which is why it has a very different looking name, which is a good sign. Escort should inherit from quest completion. Hello, why not? Namespace, as always, when you can't find something... So you know the difference between putting it in the RPG.quest namespace, hopefully, and using that namespace. Using the namespace is when there's a dependency on it. So from outside, code that's outside of the RPG.quest will have to be using RPG.quest. Code that's inside RPG.quests will, uh, will be using the namespace rather than the using directive. It'll be inside the namespace, in the folder, if you like, rather than opening the folder. Using is like opening a folder. Namespace is like put me in the folder. Quest completion. So now we have some quest completion behavior on escort. Now, um, well, at least we have a field. Let's just go and do the initial wiring up. This class doesn't actually need to do anything yet. We can do a reasonable amount without. So who's going to give me this? Maybe, um, maybe I need another test dude in here. So let's give myself another test quest giver, this dude here. And he can, um, he can have the fug conversation. No, we better make a new conversation. Make a new conversation. And TerraVice is going to potentially make us up an asset for this, so it looks better. And this is going to be the, I don't know, this is Escort. Just call him Escort just for fun. Hey, take me, why not? Try me to the bridge. Uh, and the player is going to go, uh, okay. Because he's up for anything. He's kind of like a bit like uh, a bit like that dude. Who's that dude? What's his name? In... Um, in Silicon Valley, who's the kind of dumb dude who ends up stuck on the roof of the building? Um, ugh. Uh, what's his name? Oh, well, you guys will tell me in a minute. Otherwise, I'll look it up. Something I ran at work, uh, made a clip, had to delete it. Horrible at Twitch. Please nobody clip this. Don't worry, just try clipping, guys. Anything you do is massively appreciated and helps all other students and yourself in the future to index the date, the, the stream and find things. But it also helps you learn. It's meta-learning. Clipping, saying, oh, this bit of it is useful. It's like you taking notes, yeah? It's like you writing down notes. It's, it's a tactile way of doing the same thing. Same if you listen to an audio book. Clip. Clip the part of the audio book, make some notes. So by you clipping a bit of the stream and making notes... Um, if it's, an, if it's something that's useful to know, it's an intellectual thing, then you're learning better. And if it's an entertaining thing, then you're just probably having more fun than those who aren't clipping it. So, Can quest givers only be NPCs? Uh, or can give items, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Numbnuts, good question. I love your, I love your, your handle. Uh, quest giver is anybody that has a voice at the moment, potentially. And it's, yeah, it's only NPCs. Although, what is an NPC? NPCs are composed, right? So this guy here, He's not got any enemy intention, enemy AI intention. Also means he doesn't move around. We might want to separate out patrolling movement from enemy behavior. But this guy, he's an NPC because he has health, he has a weapon, he doesn't actually need a weapon. Um, but he has a voice, and it's the fact that he has a voice. And we're going to give him the escort conversation. I might as well just use this dot as dragging seems to not be working. The quest is going to be, um, well, we need to make a new quest, don't we? An actual quest in here. So let's, that's... Uh, School going to be called Take Me to the Bridge. So let's just create an empty child. Take me to the bridge. Awesome. So there it is. And now we've got, what is it? Well, it's a quest. So we just add a quest script. It is available. So that's it. So take me to the bridge. Now, um, he will already issue Take Me to the Bridge, which is... No, he won't. No, he won't. No, he won't. Because he's not linked to it. This dude here needs to know what's the quest that I'm going to give, and it's Take Me to the Bridge. Cool. So now, let's try it. Hey Ben, how are you going? No tech issues. No, I think that having a dedicated 
broadband is what I'm trying to say. Kill the purple blind. Yeah, that's all good. I think having a dedicated broadband is fixing it, I hope. Which is great, because it means my bit of hardware works, which means I don't feel so bad about spending money on it. I don't feel bad about it anyway. But um, I don't need to feel bad about it or anything. Quest list. Just make this a bit bigger, and I'm just going to combobulate the font size a little. It's a little big. 48 down to 36. Trying to avoid getting into inventory. Yep, we're trying to avoid trying to get into inventory. I'm just trying to... Anything I possibly can to avoid getting into in inventory is good. Well, so look, friend, we have three active I quests. You're on and the right path to the village. That purple guy gets in my way. We'll only have any more than that. I'm going to only have two active quests because he is going to get done. Okay. So take me to the bridge has been issued. We have no errors apart from this annoying screen position at a frustrum. Guys, if any of you out there want a challenge to do with, um, to do with UI and the way the default camera is set up, Work out what this red arrow is. Here's the GitHub. Be awesome. Save me a load of time. Yeah, I want to. I want Rick to voice one of my characters in my future RPG. I'm sure that can be arranged, Bindi. Here's the deal. Become a twi tier three subscriber, and he'll do it live on one of the Meet the Mentors events. How's that? Uh, no, it's not a silly question at all, Num Nuts. Uh, this is all hard to follow. It's just a behind the scenes. I'm just doing the work I would be doing privately on my own anyway, and doing it publicly because it's more fun. That's what's going on. <laughs> If you guys want to be on the first part of the course, go take that on Udemy. It's wicked. All right, so um, not too worried about that screen out of frustrum thing, position out of frustrum, view frustrum, but I'd like to get rid of it. Um, so follow me. Now, that's interesting. What does that fundamentally mean? Well, I think it means that if you're going to escort, you're going to have to know about RPG.characters, surely. Kind of makes sense. Now, fundamentally, what is an escort? Well, are we actually going to make this guy... This is going to spread as well, by the way. The, the architecture is going to spread because we're going to have to make this guy follow us, which is something that they currently don't do and can't do. So that's going to be interesting. Where am I in the world, by the way? I'm down... There you go. No name thug... Let's just give him a more sensible name. Escort me. Okay... So basically, the first thing that needs to happen, there needs to be a conversation around it, but we've kept our conversations really simple. Um, yeah, you kind of serve as a rubber duck. Yes, you do. That's cool. And I'm glad you're serving as a rubber duck. I'm really grateful for you being here, by the way. You're like a rubber duck, but you're much more intelligent and interactive than a rubber duck, of course. So I'm going to use some pseudocode. Uh, the, the guy is going to need to follow the player and then you're going to need to detect when at destination and then you need to do something <laughs> okay um yes z z z z z z dark z dark imon z dark imon yeah it's like part two basically but we haven't actually started shipping the content yet this is the prototyping um, yeah, I mean, I'm not a hundred, the jury's a little bit out as exactly how part two is going to get delivered. It depends. Uh, is anybody actually following this along and able to progress their RPG by watching these streams? Are you more watching them for entertainment and planning on progressing your personal RPGs at another time? Now, I could put that up as a poll, actually. And the other thing is, are, is this poll system we use, is it okay? I mean, I like it. It's really good back end over on my other machine. Um, but is it okay with you guys? I know you have to spend a few bits, but you can get those for watching adverts. Is it an okay poll system, or should I look for another one? Um, what was going to be the poll? Uh, I'm going to put up a one-minute poll for should we keep this poll system or look for another right now. Let's go with that. Should work on desktop and mobile if you can find Voting Studio. I think that's what it's called. Uh, yeah, the VODs will be available and everything will be exported to YouTube, but you could just pick up our project state and follow on from here, but it might be a bit much. So um, mostly watching it for now as I'm still working on your own project. Cool. Yeah, I would. D dust it off. It's good, good habit to be able to dust things off. It lowers the chance that you feel like you can never go back to an old project. The more you do go back to old projects, the more it feels like you can go back to old projects. So look, we're going to have to get into the character now, and we're going to have to get into what I don't really like being the enemy AI, because this does too much. What does the enemy AI do? Ugh. A lot. I wouldn't let myself write code that's that complicated now. 
as they get more stupid and old, then I write code that's easier and easier to read, which is either progress or retrograde. I don't know. Um, so this basically, this guy is patrolling and working out whether it should be hitting or chasing. Basically, if it's outside the chase ring, then he stops attacking. Otherwise, if it's in the chase ring, he chases. And then if it's in the weapon circle, he weapons. None of this gives me any ability to 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 walk or follow. Uh, yeah, see, I've already said this before. Consider specializing to NPC movement. We've already considered that. I uh, want an easy, easy way. So where do we issue the the target? So patrols is character dot, dot set destination. I'm going to talk straight to the character now in this follow, and then I'm going to talk about bringing that, extracting that out later. So let's just talk to the character. Uh, straw poll. Yeah, I tried straw poll, num nuts, um, and I could. Oh. Was that the one I tried? No, stream poll I tried, and that was no good. Um, yeah, it's not embedded into Twitch, though, is it? But I do like the fact that I like we can do multiple options. Um, yeah, I just wonder how well that would work. So oh, let's try it. Don't want comments. So if I create that poll and give you that, um, how does that work in co comparison to Voting Studio? I like Voting Studio. Um, I like the fact that you have to part with one or two pennies, actually, or a little bit of time, because my adage when you're marketing something is you have to part with time, money, or information to, to actually f f for that response to be as valuable. And you can either watch an ad or part with a tiny bit of money. So that's I like that because I take more notice of the of the results. I don't like how low the numbers are. Hey, Grasshopper, nice to see you. Uh, you probably did miss some stuff, but it's okay. Uh, the ch we'll catch you up. You'll be good. So anyway, I want to crack on with this now. So let's go and see what happens if we talk about an escort quest. Follow the player. Well, let's go uh, get component. Well, we're going to assume that the escort quest is, got, is on something that's got a character script. Yes, so therefore let's require the component, which means when you first add the script, it needs to be here. It needs to be precisely here. Require component, type of to get the type out of it, and then character. So this means when we first add the uh, escort component to so this guy, actually he hasn't got an escort component yet, so let's do this. He has a voice, that's fine, but he also... His his quest completion criteria, this particular guy, is not go find somebody else. It's this guy has... Oh, we're also going to need some proximity. Follow the player if in range. As, just because it's the guy I'm actually speaking to, this is going to work a bit differently. You're going to complete the quest. Well, you're going to complete this quest. Take me to the bridge. That's good. And then let's just try it. So we're going to go get component for now of type character what's wrong with that I think nothing dot get component of type character what's the problem quest quest completion why can I not do a get component I could read the error message get component character does not exist oh because that's not the method is it but it's not auto-completing. Why are you not auto-completing? What's wrong? So first thing to check if your auto-complete doesn't work is that your code is compiling. Ah, ah, ah. Audio clip for cell notifications. What's that about? And where's the best place to find the character control scripts or is available? Uh, uh, am, am, amma, 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 1969. Not sure. There, anyway. Uh, you ain't writing it into a function. Am I being silly? Yes, I'm being silly. Thank you. You know why that is? So that's interesting, by the way, guys. So that shows that visually I'm anchoring to this second level indent Python style, whereas actually because I'm in a namespace and I haven't been writing code into namespaces recently, that's what's going on. So um, what we need to do actually is probably talk. We should, we, I don't want to do two things at once. But we should probably have the ability to add two different quest triggers here. One is that I get in range of this guy, and secondly, that we escort. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to do this on start. And thank you for telling me I'm not writing in a function. Um, and we're going to follow the player if in range, and then to do, to do couple with uh, the collision quest criteria. 
so that we can get into range of this NPC and then do this. But for now, let's just prove the idea works. So character, uh, get component, sorry, which I'll now work because I'm typing in a sensible place, uh, character. And then we're going to dot set destination, and then we're going to set it to now. How do we find the player in this game? Do we remember how we find the player? I think it has a tag. Yeah. So let's go find the player. So var, because it's easy to write, player equals find uh, tag. Let's just type tag. No. Uh, game object dot tag. Find with tag player. And it's a string, which I don't mind in the case of a tag. String reference. There we go. <laughs> How did I do that without moving my lips, eh? Set destination player dot transform. It's actually going to need to do this every frame. Let's just see if this guy follows me. Should do. But it's going to need to only do it when the quest is active. So, uh, and also there's something not working. Argument transform. Oh, dot position. What's our advice for reusable character control script? Start with Unity stuff, and then um, then start to really take ownership of the code yourself. If you look at our character class, our enemy AI class, most of this has been refactored out of what was originally Unity stuff. Watch the part one of the RPG, basically. Loads of stuff about character control in there. So this dude is following me, but I only want him to follow me if the quest is active. And if it's me giving him the quest, it basically means I need to talk to him first. We're also going to need to try this on other people giving me the quest. Um, so escort, that's fine. So that what this is doing is it's following the player. This should probably be a coroutine. So I enumerator, follow player, um, what's wrong with that? Uh, access modifiers, oh, I see, uh, like private, I enumerator, follow player, something like that. And then we're going to need to, this is the stuff we're going to do. I think we'll find the player and pass it in. And then we're going to do something like uh, yield, return, unfortunately, new, just because it's complicated, wait for, end of frame. So every frame, we're just going to follow the player. So we go find the player, and then we start coroutine, follow player. So that should do exactly the same thing, but it's no longer, well, it is kind of in update. And oh, this doesn't happen in update, now. it happens in start. Okay, so on start, you find the player, and you, uh, and you follow the player. Uh, there's no argument. You're going to need to pass the player in. Thank you if anybody see, saw that in the chat. And then later, we're not going to do it on start. We're going to do it when the when the script, when the the uh, thingamajig starts, when the quest actually starts. So we're on line 22 doing a boo-boo. Where's the boo-boo on line 22? Um, wait for end of frame is probably a method. Oh, I'm going to going to have a little look at the chat in a minute it's getting rather exciting so this dude just follows me okay that's all very well but what we want to do is we want to go get the quest and we want to say only only um only start following the player we want to wrap this follow player into an if statement and then we commit and then we go from there so how do we do that well go look at another one go look at something else so like that or the kill one um you know we I don't know. So let's just work it out from scratch. So I need to know if the state of the current quest, what, what state it is. Well, we inherit from quest completion. Quest completion has a quest to complete. So I should be able to just go and get quest to complete, right? So what I want to say is something like uh, quest to complete dot get, get quest state. If that equals quest state dot started, so this is a boolean, right? This is a logical condition, or var, if we like. Bool, bool um, quest started. Just self-documentation. The quest started is that condition there. Now, what's wrong with that? Cannot be applied to operand type method group. Ah, okay, just because I haven't finished the curlies. Okay, and that's a bit weird, that, but it works, right? And then we can say, if, and now we need to do this on update, by the way. So let's take this stuff and do it on update. Uh, oh, yes, 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 that's fine. So we're going to go without the private. We're just going to go void update. Going to get rid of the private here. 
and just say to ourselves, and I know I'm not explaining this in the same way as I would be on a course. Oh, what happened? I can't have a white font. That's not possible. So I have to go back. I must have copied the wrong thing. I guess it's vaguely possible I have a white font. OK. So on update, we ask if quest started, we do a simple enum comparison, then we're going to start coroutine, follow the player. Um, now, I, now I'm tempted to cache whether we started following the player, but I don't really want to do that. I guess, I guess it's OK. So it's OK to, it is a piece of state of the escort class. So MB header, my little shortcut. Uh, there are no configuration parameters. There is a private instance variable potentially, which is bool is escorting equals false. Don't like it. Don't like Boolean flags in general, but I think because because it's probably obvious whether you're escorting from something else. But at this stage, I think we're okay. I think that that, that kind of makes sense. Um, right, and then our messages, etc. I'm going to get rid of that comment. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Tidy it all up. And then we can say if quest started and not, or to be more explicit, if, if escorting is false, then we follow the player and we say is escorting is of course true. Don't like it. Don't like Boolean flags. So to do, really need a Boolean flag? Question mark. Don't know. Then the player becomes a um, instance variable. Doesn't need to be an instance variable. The player. Reference should not be the state of the uh, of the of the class, so I'm going to get rid of that stuff there, and I'm going to get rid of any extraneous comments I don't need. And then I'm going to check this works, and then I'm going to come to the chat and see how you guys are doing. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so let's try it. So he shouldn't follow me until I start talking to him, basically. Oh, thank you very much um, for auto hosting us or hosting us. Awesome job. Now he follows me. Cool. So to take me to the bridge, he follows me. Uh, but he doesn't keep following me. Why not? When do we set destination? Um, because we are not in a loop in the follow player. So while true, careful with while true, so careful with while true, I think that I would commit. While true is so dangerous that you can lose everything. So, so, um, Escort quest nearly working, and let's qualify. Need to make need to while true in coroutine. Just a little hint: if you're going to do a while true, just in case you do a boo boo, commit first. By the way, you guys can get my code on GitHub. It's all live now. While true, because we want to follow forever, so you might want to justify a while true. The while true is because you keep following until something else happens, right? Until we cancel the coroutine. Uh, by the way, you can get the coroutine handle back here, and you probably uh, should get the handle back. So you can say var um, follow handle or something like that equals star coroutine. What have we got coming back from here? Well, it's a Unity engine coroutine. Um, you would need to then declare that at a higher level if you wanted to be able to keep hold of the handle. If we want to explicitly cancel that coroutine, then as a, is it state? Or is it, it's basically is state. State and references are the same thing. So we could say coroutine, and then we could say follow handle, and we don't have to initialize it. And then what we can do is we can set the follow handle here, and that means that at any other point, you can stop following by saying follow handle dot something. You could say follow handle dot, and then you could, um, you have to stop coroutine, follow handle, I think is what you do. Stop coroutine, and you would pass in follow handle, and that's how you would stop the coroutine if you wanted to. And you're being specific about it rather than um, rather than just stopping all coroutines anyway. So I think I'll do that um, so that we can stop later. So we can stop surgically, I'll say. We can surgically stop that coroutine. Anyway, while true, and true isn't like that in C sharp, it's like that in C sharp. Um, you know, follow until further notice, off you go. Shouldn't cause a problem, but I don't like while trues. So computers often don't like while, uh, while trues. So let's just check that works. So go here, we click on him, boom. And I try and run away from him. And now because the uh, actual behavior of setting the NPC's position to the player's position is in a, in, a, in a loop, then we are in good shape. I'm going to get rid of this log entry, uh, wherever it is here, because I don't like logs 
get rid of your prints in your solutions. Don't leave, um, don't leave print in your solution. So while I do that, let's do a find in files print and make sure that we don't have any left and a debug.log, non-case sensitive. Errors and assertions are okay. Don't leave too much logging there. Otherwise you'll end up with cry wolf. You won't be able to see the wood for the trees as we say. Awesome, so I think that that is success. We're making good progress. I'm gonna stand up and read the chat. Give me a second. Um, so follow quest part one working. Basically the follow quest part one is working. In part two, we need the guy to detect that he has arrived at the destination. So we'll just do that. Oh man, you run around the fence and he gets stuck. Probably does. Are you playing my game or something, Num Nuts? I feel really bad about calling you Num Nuts, but I guess. Uh, so get follow. So complete follow quest. Okay, I'm going to turn some lights on and uh, make my chat bigger, make my face bigger, make make the chat bigger, and generally do some community interaction for a minute because that's partly what it's all about. Back in a sec. I'm not going far. Let there be light, and there was. Uh, if at any point you think it's break time. Uh, and we need more trampolining in our lives, then let me know, and that will get done. Uh, I need to catch up on the tra chat. So, wow, where are we? Uh, you Don't you have to assign a variable? Probably. So some of these will just be, I'm doing something daft and not realizing, and thank you for your help. And sorry, I didn't look at the time. Uh, use, reusable character control, watch part one is my advice. Love these tu uh, tutorials. Every tutorial watch and follow along with comes at a certain point where the instructor says something like, and now I'm just going to import my own custom library. You're saying we don't do that, numb nuts. I hope you're saying we don't do that. We try not to do anything off screen, pretty much. The only thing we do a little bit is like Rick's, once Rick's has shown you the basics of how you create a level, he'll then maybe do a bunch of level creation off, offline, but not, um, that was me trying to focus while looking at the camera, uh, whilst not boring you stiff, but hopefully that's a good thing. Uh, Voting studio, how are we doing on that vote? That vote was, uh, look for another. <laughs> Maybe you guys do want a different voting solution. I don't know how that other vote that I put in did. Straw poll, did people actually use it? Few results. Yeah, it got more votes, obviously. How's it working well? Not so good. Interesting to know what's not so good about it. Uh, um, top quality content. Thank you very much for the, yeah, it's good quality content, hopefully. Um, this Twitch stuff is very different. Just be aware that this is not course production. But you know that. Um, restarting an opinion on the polls, accidentally deleted it. Um, Strawfall will be good to allow after the fact voting while people are watching the VODs. Yeah, that's true. Also tries using the URL and see if, uh, if it's inside in Twitch instead of the window. Let's try. That is not for me. I don't know if it is for other people. Uh, that's the RPG. Another question. Do any of your courses teach how to create character creator screens? Uh, no, not yet, but we're going to have some of that in the Unity RPG. So if we go for Udemy BCC, which is the Blender Character Creator, that will show you how to make animated rigged very basic characters. And then in this course, we'll be doing some basic character customization. And if we don't get to it in this course for any reason, then it will be in the Godot course, which um, is coming out in a couple of few weeks. There's the Kickstarter. Follow me on Kickstarter to get an update when it actually hits Udemy. Also, make sure you're opted into our promos on Udemy because the Godot course is huge and it's coming soon. Um, I like the quest of a Boolean flag because the NPC gets stuck, then the flag can be turned to false or some other state. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it's reasonable state of the NPC that he is in the process of escorting. So I think that's okay. You just want to really ask before you promote anything to an instance variable, is this valid state? Because it's state that always messes us up. So no, not everybody has bits, but you can buy bits for not very much money and support us, or you can watch an advert, apparently, according to peop other people. Uh, so you don't list Game Maker in one of the engines you officially support. We do. Um, we do have Udemy hmm, GMS. I don't know what our short code for Game Maker is. We do have a Game Maker course. Uh, there you go. There's all our courses. Have a look there. Um, Benjamin Anderson has a Game Maker course with us. I'm speaking to him. Oh, is it today? No, it's tomorrow, and I will put on my notes to make sure that we're very clear on what support he's giving to that Game Maker course. OK, 
Okay. Just making a note on my calendar entry, which is where I tend to put things, and also I send it to him so I know that I'm going to ask that question. Okay, you know Blender already, that's good news, so you don't need that. What's this thing? Some news feed. How to draw an owl. Let's draw some circles, draw the rest of the f owl. Yeah, very cool. Um, that image of how to draw. Yeah, so hopefully we're not like that and we take you through step by step, and uh, that's certainly the plan. Um, okay, that's cool. I guess the hard thing about Bindi, about the ads, is um, if you're a subscriber, you don't get the ads, and therefore you don't get an opportunity to watch the ads and gain the bits, right? So it's kind of a worse experience for subscribers in a way, maybe. Don't know. Tell me what you think. Um, I'm also going to try, I'm guessing for subscribers, tell me what happens here just for fun. I'm trying to learn this Twitch thing, and I'm really grateful for you guys helping me because without your help, well, obviously I wouldn't learn it. So if I run an ad for a really tiny amount of time from my mobile, if you could tell me in the chat who of you get an ad and who don't, right? So now the ad should be running right now. Is that happening? So probably not for most people. And I won't, didn't notice the language at the bottom. Num nuts. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry. The, the clue is in your handle. <laughs> um, my character mechanics kind of get complex. So the character scripting and character creation screens would be fabulous. Mm-hmm. There are ads located under the bits icon, so you can... Oh, okay, that's cool to know. Um, that's the Game Maker Studio course. Thank you very much, Lucy Game Dev. Oh, Lucy Game Dev. Is that Lu Lucy, would you like to dive on live on Zoom? Would you like to hop on Zoom and say hello to the, to the people? Who would like to see Lucy? If you'd like to see Lucy, we need a GDTV Lucy in the chat. Slam it full of Lucys, and she will come on live. Maybe. I mean, she might not. I'm putting her on the spot here. That's the emoticon you need. If you want some Lucy, let's have some Lucy. Um, she's saying no. That's mean. But we could peer pressure into her coming on. Ah, you see Lucy. Look at that. That's a lot of Lucy love. That is a lot of Lucy love. Uh, Amara, 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 1969. Sorry about the ads. I'm just testing. I don't like ads. Uh, and I'm sure you didn't. So, <laughs> TT unsubscribed, unsubbed. Um, which is a go for me. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, there's an option for Prime. It seems just all purchase. What? There is no option for Prime. No, no, you should be a Prime subscribe. You really should be a Prime subscribe to this channel. Depends on your country. Not all countries uh, have it. Um, lots of Lucy love. Lucy, you're coming on. Getting lots of love. I'm going to open the Zoom just in case. Hope we don't dive in live to another meeting. I'm going to just go to the side here just in case. Mikey's like undressed or something. I'm going to stop recording because we don't need to be recording and recording and recording of the recording. And I am going to see if Lucy's going to... Oh, look at her. Very brave, Lucy. I'm going to see if Lucy's going to... Oh, look at that. So we are echoing horribly. Let me see if we can see oh, that. Yeah, you need to turn your thing all the way down. Yeah, I haven't got headphones. Oh, that's okay. You should just about be able to hear me and still go. So, gallery view. Testing Ben. Can you hear Ben? You probably can. Can you hear Lucy? Hello. JC Adventure Gamer Lucy, you're making people subscribe at a rate of knots. Look at that. We've had two subscribes in the last <laughs> few seconds just because you've come on. You are the star of the show. Audio's all good. Any questions for Lucy? Or Lucy, any comments for our wonderful community? They've been watching me code for a long time now. I'm going to polish the shininess out of my forehead while they ask you questions. Never thought I'd be doing makeup live on TV. <laughs> yeah, I should have done my makeup before coming on as well. No, you're fine. Naturally, natural beauty is what we want. Then there's me. They've been watching me trampolining earlier, Lucy. It's very embarrassing. I've, I've been watching while well, I've been doing reviews. I saw the um, saw the trampolining. I'm upset that nobody's made a clip of it, but hopefully there'll be something. Oh, you can make a clip of things. You can clip clip for us as well. That's true. You've just gone and given yourself a job. Never suggest anything to me, guys. You will, you will be getting, you will be getting jobs if you do that. My just had a notification from my car that the alarm has gone off. So I always like to text my wife and check that that is, uh, that is normal. And uh, I'll do that. Lucy, any any announcements to have? What courses have we got coming up? What are the next course launches? Um, so we've got a new Unity Tech Art course, which is super exciting, which is coming out um, at the end of this month um that we've done partner with wilma so that's very exciting and then next month we've got godot going live to everyone who wasn't on the kickstarter so again all exciting stuff 
If you guys can get into the clipping, it would be awesome because um, it really does help you learn and it helps other people to index the content. And um, yeah, that would be cool. Bindi had a good idea of, of saving the chat sh uh, transcript. So um, into the GitHub and then people can search what we said. So that'd be cool. Tech Art Course. Who was it with again? Wilma. Wilma Lim. Can we find... I'll see if I can get you a link to Wilma's other courses on Udemy so you can get all excited about how cool he is. Um, what does a regular day with my job look like? It looks very similar to um, what you see when you watch Ben streaming. So if I'm at uh, his house, it's lots of watching Ben trampoline and uh, flying planes into trees and walking around on his hands. Um, oh, I feel like I've been mis misrepresented. <laughs> How could that possibly be the case? But um, yeah, it's lots, of, it's lots of talking to you wonderful folks on all of our different platforms. So on Twitter and Facebook and over on Udemy and on our forums. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of engaging with the community and trying to be helpful where I can. Thanks for thanks for coming on Twitch Live, Lucy. You said no, but then there was so much Lucy love in the chat and so many such a wash of subscribers that we you couldn't possibly not be here, could you? Yes. Oh, but I'm trying. I'm trying to put myself uh, out of my comfort zone. So awesome. And you've done that. And that's awesome. Not that you look out of your comfort zone, I hasten to add. So we have somebody here with a different icon. And this is Chu Chu Laid. And Chu Laid here is oh, another is Twitch Chu, Chu Laid partner, I believe. And Chu Laid is currently hosting us. So Chu Laid, you rock. You were born in 1739. That is uh, a long time ago. Dropped out of school in 1788. Emerged from the Mariner Trench. This dude has got an interesting history. Check him out. So thank you firstly for hosting us. Uh, well done for also being a Twitch partner. And you have 7,000 followers. So it's super kind of you to be to be hosting us. And you can raid us sometime, whatever that means. That's another Twitch terminology. So I think you're awesome for, for doing that and for taking an interest. Um, any chance that the tech art course came from my request on Udemy? Uh, possibly. Who are you, Julaid? What's your... I know that you were born hundreds of years ago, but um, we listen to the community. So the chances are if, if you or anybody else said, hey, you should team up with Wilma Lim and make a course, it may have been many months ago, but uh, it could well be. Okay, I am going to dive out and let you guys carry on. But it was nice saying hi. It was awesome to have you here, Lucy. You have brightened the stream. Bye. Goodbye. Keep spreading sunshine. <laughs> Bless her. She came on. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yes, that's hard for Lucy, by the way. She doesn't really like just jumping on, especially at the last minute, not knowing what she's going to say publicly like that. So can we give some parting GDTV Lucy love to Lucy, please? That would be awesome. So so do I carry on with the RPG now? Or do we take a break while I try and make a, a some pixel art of a squirrel? Which would you prefer? So let's, um, oh, do a straw poll, as you guys are telling me to do straw polls. So strawpoll.tv. We're going to go squirrel, squirrel icon or RPG coding, question mark. And let's, uh, so squirrel or RPG. Squirrel will take a few minutes. You're not allowed multiple choices. There's the poll. Slam the poll right now. Yes or no. Awesome. Can I get the results somehow? Is this live? How does it work? It's all exciting. Look at all that Lucy love coming out. She gets much more love than I do. Nobody ever shares my, well, money. who would want to share my face? But do you encourage students to stick to your course until finish or wandering off? Uh, Ugg Ug Squish, which is a really cool name. Thank you for being here. Um, we encourage you to keep moving forward and keep doing stuff regardless. And if you get stuck for whatever reason, don't blame yourself. Um, try and look inside and go, am I stopping because I'm procrastinating or because I'm unprepared to move forward. There's a difference between procrastinating and preparing. And knowing the difference is really hard because it feels very similar. Often before I make a video, I have to work out whether I'm procrastinating or preparing. So try and notice the difference. If you're, but you see, you're learning. So you really should just be to move forward. It's not that you're actually, it's not probably quite the same, but it'll be a similar feeling to me getting to the point before a video where I don't record it when I should be recording it, but I'm, maybe I'm not ready or maybe I'm procrastinating. If I'm not doing it because I'm scared, then I'm just going to do it because I'm scared and get used to doing that. But if I'm not doing it because I'm not ready, I'm not going to do it. Or I'm going to do it and fail. So either way, just move forward. That's the point. If you're not prepared, what do you do? You get more information, you get more prepared. So you do something, you take action. If you are um, 
procrastinating because you're scared, then you just need to build the habit of moving forward. So for whatever reason you're not moving forward, just move forward. If that needs to be in a different course to keep moving forward, keep moving forward. If that was useful to anybody, clip it. Uh, wow, the chat is getting really rather busy right now, which is quite cool. Don't I sound English? You know what, I really would like an English cup of tea in about half an hour, but really rather busy. That's what it's getting, this chat. Hey, you guys are liking the love icon. That's cool. Um, so now let's look at the straw poll. How do, I, how do I see how that straw poll's doing? No votes. That's not very good. Pause sorting. Sorting? Pause sorting. What does that mean? I'm just going to click on it up here. That was the poll about whether I should do the script RPG. I don't know. How does this work? What am I doing wrong? I cannot even see the results. I'm going to open it in an incognito browser. Boom. See if that works. Total votes, zero. I think nobody's voting. <laughs> Sad. Okay. Not voting on poll. Poll says loading on my end. Don't know how to use this stream poll. Looks like another options. Had to reload. They've missed the poll. Go back and forth between Chrome and Windows app of Twitch. Somebody else has made a poll. Thank you. Oh, and we have Zephyr. Zephyr, I, Zephyr is now hosting us. Thank you, Zephyr. So the results, I would rather I would rather quickly make the squirrel icon. Let's see what the results are. Oh, coding. But look, they're quite keen. Okay, I'm going to do more coding, and we'll keep coming back to this poll until the until the results are such that people are more keen on the squirrel. Terravice, thank you very much for making the poll properly, and I am somewhat embarrassed that I can't make it properly myself. I'll see the results on my other... Oh, 50-50 squirrel coding. Ah, oh, bugger, I'm going to make the squirrel. Let's make the squirrel really quick. Let's see how quick we can do it. So Pixelmator Pro, let's go get a squirrel. Um, let's see if we can get it for free. So this is how you get quick pixel art, right? So S-Q-U-I-R-R-E-L. Um, squirrel icon, how do you spell squirrel? Doesn't matter with Google, you just have to get close to it um, and then type that. Now you can try uh, going to images and having a go at tools, usage rights labeled for reuse and see if you can find something that's absolutely blatantly looks like a squirrel, probably colored and is um, labeled for reuse. You better be careful, very careful about the um, Allow and you know allowances. What do you call it? The rights on it. Pixabay. Now, what is the copyright requirements on Pixabay? I think we might be nearly there. Creative Commons. Free com for commercial use. No attribution required. Hmm. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Now, is this an actual image file? Can I just drop it straight on there? Probably it's a PNG. So in Pixelmator Pro, going to make myself a new um, new thingy. I'm getting more car alarms probably an animal inside the car. So I'm going to make myself a new image, uh, new, I've got myself somewhere down under my templates, a Twitch thumb, Twitch emote, 112 by 112. Um, if you are watching Pixelmator Pro, I would really rather, I'll show you something that I'd really like you to do soon, but you probably don't care. Well, that's not fair. You might care a lot. I did tweet you twice. Lucy, keep an eye out for the tweet to Pixelmator Pro. So, uh, so we have now a, um, I'll show you what I'm talking about, by the way. There's a specific thing I want them to do. So 112 by 112 at a position of 0, 0. So now I've got the squirrel in there. Just make it a bit bigger. These are the biggest pixel sizes. There's a few of these emotes that I have to, to have, different sizes for Twitch. We could rotate this puppy now. Not that it's a puppy, it's a squirrel. Which way round? I think it's got to be that way. All our stuff seems to be rotated that way. Um, how should he look? What am I, what's, what's good about this squirrel? No, not that way round. I think maybe actually shouldn't be rotated. Slightly changing my mind. He needs to fit in perfectly, which he does to the pixel there. And zoom out so it's like roughly the size it's going to be. Yeah, that looks like a squirrel. Are we happy with that? Let's see in the chat. Is this a good squirrel? The one that I have made here. No rotation. Poles have not shown up. Sorry about that. I might just keep using the, the, the bit pole thing, to be honest. And just uh, when there's more people, it will make more sense. Plus, we'll earn a tiny bit from it and the results will be more meaningful. Head lower than tail, probably a little bit. Some people are saying no rotation, but I think head lower than tail is kind of more funny. It's like the squirrel going down a, uh, a fine blind alley. We should probably also flip horizontally like that and then reverse that rotation. So it's something more like that. Is that f are you feeling that, guys? Is that, like, is that like what we want for our squirrel icon? The squirrel is fine. This is starting to seem like, shut up, the squirrel's fine. Can you please get on with the RPG? So at that stage, I think I will just maximize the squirrel's size into this available space. And then this is what I want Pixelmator to do for us. I want them in their web export option to under here, I want a nice SVG, oh no, where is it, PNG. I want the option to not only export it at one times and 0.5 times, 
I also want to be able to export it at 0.25 times, and you don't let me, you buggers. So it makes it actually quite hard now because I've now got to mess around to uh, to make this work. So um, anyway, so I'm going to export it like this. I'm going to put it in my emotes folder like so. Oh, I better give this a name, Squirrel, into the Twitch emotes folder here, which is GDTV Squirrel SQ. SQ will do for Squirrel. It's going to be too long otherwise. Now we're doing a web export, which will go down to two different sizes. So let's do that now. Um, and then I have to do one. Annoyingly now, I have to go and resample one of those. So let's just go to Twitch. I'll have most of them here now. We will have GDTV Squirrel. Uh, this will be a 112 pixel if I look at the details. If I go to the inspector, that'll be 112, 112. Yep, this one here will be 5656. And now I'm going to have to make a duplicate of that or something. Um, I better just say what the sizes are. So this should be, what's half of 56? 20. Do I really mean 28? But do I really mean 56? I guess I do. Um, 112. I wish Pixelmator would have different suffixes as well. You could probably do that in Pixelmator, actually. Probably have different suffixes based on this. I think I can. So I think I think I can set the suffixes. Okay, so these are the right sizes. Just need to redo the 28 one because the blinking program won't do it for me. So this, by the way, is how behind the scenes um, you make the thingamajigs, the icons. I'll go and upload that now and submit it to, well, I won't do it on the screen, but uh, you get the idea. So that was it. I did the squirrel, whether you wanted me to or not, I feel bad. Uh, they're the rest of our remotes. We need one for Sam soon as well. But the squirrel will be on its way to the chat shortly. Okay. If anybody else wants to make us any custom emotes, please do. Um, are you rushing an uh, art job? Yes, I'm sorry, I did Tasty Graph because I'm basically because I'm rubbish at it. Uh, but I would get better if I did more of it. I guess the icons I've been doing recently for all the events aren't too bad, are they? So if we look at our past events, do these icons look like they're made by a complete Muppet? These, I was quite proud of my director's cut one. Um, I don't think they look like they're made by a complete Muppet. But I made them, so maybe they are. Sam will get around to his icon. Yeah, if you guys want to make us any, then I'll give you the, you, what you need is Twitch partner emotes. Um, emotes here. And you can, no. Yeah, if you want to make them, this is how to, how to make emotes. Just share the files with me and you're good. Uh, don't you talk bad about UE, UE? What's UE? Unreal Engine, I love Unreal Engine. I'm not going to talk bad about Unreal Engine. What I'm going to do is crack on with the RPG, which was the second thing you wanted me to do. So we need to complete the follow quest. So you also can't see my face, which you're probably going to say don't bother if I if I put that up on the screen. So I won't subject myself to such rudeness. I'm just going to show you my face anyway, even if you don't want to see it. Um, slightly arrogantly assuming you might want to see it. Do you want to see it? I don't know. Do I care? Not really. Am I going to do what I'm going to do anyway? Probably. Okay, let's just check the chat, and then I'll dive into the RPG, get the rest of this questing finished. Just to recap for those of you who have rejoined recently, what is going down is that I have a new quest type, which is a follow quest, and uh, I go to this guy. As soon as the quest starts, he comes to me, says, hey, take me to the bridge, and I reply, uh, okay, uh, in my rubbish but functional dialogue system, and then he follows me forever. And what he needs to do is not follow me when I get to the bridge, so I'm going to need some other script or to reuse the same script or something. You know, the or something is the critical part here in order for this to work how we want it to work. So let's see how we're doing on the chat and then we'll carry on. Uh, missed some polls, sorry about missing the polls. Uh, so, oh man, I really can't pronounce that, I'm sorry. But do we wait, do you wait till the, the Unity the main 2D Udemy course, which is this. Do, you, do we wait till that has finished the rework before you go through it? Probably, why not do the 3D version in the, um, in the meanwhile, if you haven't done that already, or the RPG or any other of our Udemy courses that relate to Unity or Unreal. Please, if you're a Unity person, you've never done any Unreal, go do Unreal. Why? Because C++ will increase your C Sharp quality, coding quality, and because you can make games in Unreal without even using C++, you can write it in Blueprint. Also, go check out Godot, Godot, because it's easier than Unity. I've got a little joke at the moment, which is that um, Unity is better than Godot, Unreal is better than Unity, but Godot is better than Unreal. <laughs> and it's a circle, vicious circle, because by the time you get to Unreal, it's so complex, you might want to actually be back at Godot. You've got to find your level, but to find your level, you've got to go around that circle. So please, yeah, do that. Here are all of our courses. They're there, um, if that worked. 
Love your squirreling by creating a squirrel. I know, I saw that. That was, uh, that, that was like, isn't that ironic? Uh, we've also got another Pixabay image here, which is, a uh, yep, lots of cool other squirrels. Okay, course is great, just sometimes specialist course are good, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we've got lots more specialist courses coming up. Sorry the poll didn't come up. Uh, it did for me. Uh, don't worry about it, I've done it now. Voting studio because of the way it persists on the screen. Um, you've got overwhelm, so just keep moving, keep going to different courses. Don't let yourself get bogged down in the mud. We've got until you've consumed all of our content, don't worry about it. Um, off to work on Building Escape. Thanks for what you do. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you for being here and thank you all for subscribing. Remember, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to Twitch and then subscribe for free. Otherwise, we're well worth paying for. Uh, Ragface. Sam will get around to his icon. Yeah, he probably will. Love the thumbnails. They draw attention to them. Uh, yep, cool. Okay, so yeah, I wrote, I wrote those. I'm glad they don't look too rubbish. How to make emotes. Thanks for that. Good Photoshop template. Ha! Huh. Good what template? Photoshop. Sorry to anybody who likes Photoshop, but whenever, oh, I said it again. Um, I just can't get on with it. I find it super counterintuitive. So instead of using Photoshop, I use uh, Pixelmator Pro because it's intuitive, but you can't get it on a PC. This is not a Mac master race thing. This is just, I would wish you could get it on a PC. Uh, I, yeah. Uh, could you say a few quick sentences about Godot? Yes. Um, it's really good. Um, it's getting better really quickly. It's already really good. Um, it forgive its initial view. It doesn't look as polished on the surface. Its rendering quality is out of the box, slightly better than Unity, and probably on a, almost on a par with Unreal. It has a genuine two D and three D pipeline. They're completely separate. It uses GD Script, which is super nice, clean, easy uh, language to be using. So I can show you that really quickly. Um, and yeah, we had a Kickstarter about it recently and it went really well and the course will be out so soon and yes, it's worth looking for. Um, and thank you to, I think we just saw a new subscriber. I'm gonna have to go to the loose soon, that happens. That happens, that biological thing. So here's GD Script, if I just make the screen bigger. Um, it's just clean and simple, it's Python-like. So no semicolons, no curly braces, no rubbish. Indentation is semantic, so the indentation matters. That is not the same as that, so whether you indent or not matters. Um, so it forces you to do your indentation right. It's a dynamically typed language. Uh, what this means is this function here, for instance, that goes and gets stuff from a JSON, what does it return? Well, who knows? Um, this thing goes and gets something from JSON, and then this thing here also goes and gets a file from JSON. Both of these two different things get different data structures completely. So dynamically typed language, pretty cool. Worth your time, worth a look. Terravice, did I call you? Did you call me? Hmm, what do I mean? Did I, uh, no, I don't think so. Did I, did, I, did I insult you? I didn't mean to insult you. Oh, oh, you're being funny. Please, any guys who's gonna be funny, what you do is you do this, you go funny, yeah? And then you say your word, your funny word, and then you go unfunny. And this is part of the BSML, which is the Ben's Stream Markup Language. Okay, so then I know. So if you do that, that'd be cool. And then I know you're being funny because, <laughs> sorry, I'm being really mean. So Jason, love Photoshop. Uh, yeah, 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 I know Jason would do it better. Photoshop would do it better. I just never got used to Photoshop and it just, a few little things drive me nuts. I like being pretend opinionated. I gotta go to the loo. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this game running and then we know what I'm doing when I'm coming back. There is no more squirreling. When I come back, I am completing the quest flow. It's gonna be worth the wait. Thank you guys for waiting for a second. I'll do this and I shall see you when I have been to the little boys room. If I can find that. Back within 10 minutes, we'll create an escort thingy. Oh, finish the escort thingy is what I'm gonna do. Okay, enjoy the chat, have the music, I'll see you soon. Interesting programmer talk, uninteresting. <laughs> yeah, exactly, very geeky, all very geeky. I'm gonna submit that icon. That's what I'm gonna do as part of my break over here. It's not gonna be very interesting to watch. Can I show you our Twitch back end? Probably not, they'll probably not be very happy with that, so I won't do that. I'm gonna submit that squirrel emote though, because I know how to party. 
we keep unlocking because you guys keep subscribing please do keep subscribing we keep unlocking more emote slots and then what that means is we've never yet got to the additional emotes that tier 2 and on subscribers get um, <laughs> because you're we're progressing too fast but that's awesome progressing fast is cool oh you sod come on it's really weird uploading PNGs to Twitch they just doesn't take them half the time I'm gonna stop that game music while I continue to talk on my break bad PNG file it's not a bad PNG file I bet it's a really good PNG file you get that a lot. I don't know. Is anybody else who's a Twitch partner? Who is the chap who was a Twitch partner we saw earlier? Um, anybody else who's a Twitch partner got problems uploading these things? I find that it regularly tells me that they're bad PNGs when everything that I can see suggests that they are good PNGs. So I think they can go and take a flying what's it up against a rubber what's it. I won't tell you what any of those things are. It may be that my PNG did not preserve transparency when I did my conversion. Oh, no, it did. Do the same thing three times. You see, Einstein said that doing the same thing multiple times and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. But with certain people's websites, that, oh, you know what? They won't approve that. You know what I did? I did a boo-boo. Let's do some quick masking. I'm going to get in trouble now. So back into this guy quickly. I just tried to submit him. And this is how I'm using my break, by the way. I'm using my break by fixing this. Um, The problem is I haven't got a transparent background. That's why it was trying to tell me that. So if I do a quick mask in here, which is quick, add, quick. Uh, yep, it's done it perfectly. Look at that. How did it detect? That must be a subtly different color. Invert selection, uh, right click, add mask, boom, done. Apart from I now need to, how do I delete the background layer? Uh, I guess I just delete it like this, boom. And then boom, is that right? And then delete background layer or don't show the background layer. Yeah, that's it. And then save. And then go to this export, change up my um, change up my suffixes if I can. Suffix. There is no suffix. So that's going to be the fifth. That's going to be the one one two, space one one two probably. And then this other guy is going to have a suffix of fifty six. Space fifty six. Okay, export that. It should go over the top if I've got my suffixes right. That's good news because that means this file's exactly right. These guys should now be transparent. One easy way to tell on the Mac is this. Yeah, these two guys are, that's perfect. And I open the 56, resize it to 28, save it, check that they're all now transparent. The 28, no, nope, did not work. Why did the 28 not work? Should have done, I think it's just wrong. No, it did not work. So let's try that again. Ah, no, I did a boo-boo, okay. Can I go to the versions of that? I overwrote it on the Mac. You can, in theory, resert, revert to a previous version, which is quite cool. Did I see your suggestion? I did not see your suggestion, but it will not be long seeing your suggestion. If I just restore that version there, bring up my inspector. This is me being useless on a computer, isn't it? This is no good. This is my break, by the way, if you wonder what I'm doing. 56 by 56, 28 by 28. Okay, so what I need to do is make sure I do this properly. Let's get rid of the 28. Open the 56, and then I'm going to read your suggestion. I'm going to read your suggestion now. No, I'm not. Oh, Terravice. No, I did not. Let's see your suggestion for the icon. Um, is this going to be funny? Ah, yeah. That's quite cool. A game dev squirrel. Yeah, we could we could move to a game dev green squirrel, couldn't we? Um, are, you, are you providing me with that as an asset I can use? Is that... Back another... Not top notch, but close. Yeah, I will consider using that. SQ2, let's have a look at it, make sure. It's not got a transparent background, but I otherwise like it. I think it's quite cool. Dot PNG. Which ones you got want, guys? Do you want the uh, do you want the, the little green squirrel or the other little Pixabay squirrel? Um, I think the green one's actually better. Terra Vice's squirrel is cooler. I might switch it round, make the background transparent, um, and go with that. You guys prefer that? Let me know. I will go take my break. You let me know whether you want uh, whether you want this squirrel or whether you want the other squirrel. Plus plus squirrel. Vote for the green. Terra Vice did a nice job on it. Yeah, it'd be really nice for it to be Terra Vice's squirrel, wouldn't it? So okay, I'm gonna just I'm gonna use that Terra Vice. Thank you. You mind if I just modify it up a tiny bit? So let's just go to Pixelmator Pro. I'm just gonna hide the other layer. Make a new layer, paste this in, um, deselect everything, 
probably turn him round if you don't mind, if that unless that insults you. Um, I'm just going to delete the background color. I think I've done that wrong. I think I need to invert my selection and then delete the background. Uh, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Do I know what I'm doing? I do not know what I'm doing. How do I do this? Deselect. Select all the stuff on the outside. Delete it. Surely you just do that. And I've got no background color. I don't want to fill. How do I remove? Maybe I just mask. That's what I do. I just mask it off. No, we don't want a layer here. This is the problem. Delete the layer. I don't really know how to use this anymore. I don't think I ever did in the first place. Add a mask. No, it's the wrong way around. So deselect, quick select, invert, right click, add layer, add mask rather. Yeah, now we need to get rid of the background layer and that's it. So spin him round, free to do what you like. Can you have more backflips and horror movie references? Uh, maybe you have a GIMP course just saying, yes, I know I could do with that GIMP course, couldn't I? Uh, let's go and uh, just send him to the right, rotate image flip horizontally, and then, oh no, it doesn't look like a squirrel now, I'm going to leave him the same way around as you had it, thank you very much Terravice, uh, let's go for this PNG thing here, nearly there, cool, alright, so we have a squirrel submitted to Twitch just before you know where we are, SQ2, squirrel, squirrel, there you go, just need this one, Resize. Them. Oh, no, they've not got their transparent backgrounds. What's wrong with that? Oh, because this is the one you give me. GGTV SQ. Oh, you see, I'm much better off coding, aren't I? Isn't this not very painful watching me mess around with this stuff? It must be pretty painful, I would have thought. So there's a squirrel that is... This is slow TV for you now. This is the... What size is that? It doesn't tell me. Why does it not tell me? There you go, there's the 56, there's the 112. Let's take the 56, duplicate it, make it a 28, or pretend it's a 28, resize it to 28. Wish I was using Photoshop. You never heard me say that because then it would do all this in one go. I'm doing the wrong squirrels. I'm gonna go for this break. I'm working on completely the wrong, wrong squirrels now and that is not helping anybody get anywhere. That's the one I wanted, but anyway. Terravice, I will do this offline. It's going on my list. Thank you very much for making it. I'm much better at coding than I am at 2D art, especially when I have all these people watching. So um, yes, let's not do that now. I will go for a break. I'm very, very hot, and I will see you shortly, probably with a different top on. So, squirrel. It's quite interesting, isn't it, how squirreled I got by squirrels. <laughs> okay, be back soon. I'll catch up on the chat. I may even keep, um, yeah, he's making me quest in the GIMP purchase. Well, that's why Mikey taught, taught it. I'll be back in a few minutes. Won't be long. Have fun.
A wonderful Wizard of Oz. Okay, I need to catch up on the chat. And then we are in good shape to crack on. How are we doing desk-wise? So what's been going on since I have been away, I wonder? Let's take a little look and then we'll go from there. So what have we got? Um, 2D, 3D RPG, do it in that order. Yeah, another way to know if someone's being funny on Twitch. End their sentence with a kappa. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't know that. Thank you. I had no idea about that. So I am a Twitch noob by the looks of it. So thank you for letting me know. Um, yep, you can use it with your wife. You can use the BSML with your wife. Absolutely. The Ben Stream markup language. Uh, technically, you didn't do the same thing three times. You exported three different settings, so your sanity is safe. Yeah, probably. But anyway, I was just messing around. I'll do it after it take me five minutes. I tried some uh, Unity on Mac and found it considerably slower than a high-end PC. Yeah, it probably will be unless you're on a high-end Mac, like a Mac Pro or something like that, or one of the recent iMacs. It's going to be considerably slower. Uh, here, here you go. Tasty Graphs is exactly the same thing. Funny, it's very similar. Um, suggestion for the icon. So, yes, I did. Thank you, Terra Vice. You rock. Um, you will be your icon that makes it to Twitch. Um, uh, you can't make it up, blah, 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 squirrel, plus, coin toss, squirrel, plus, plus. Okay, so you guys all want the plus, plus, squirrel, we'll do that. Uh, can you have more backflips and horror movie references? Uh, yes, um, you can, I'm nuts. What is the, we'll do backflips when I've got the, when I've got the functionality working. Um, there is a Udemy GIMP course, it's a small course, but it's exactly how to do those types of icons that I was failing to do. It's by Michael Bridges, super nice guy, and there is the link. When you go on a break, you should have a sign that says you're on a break, and then in the background, video trailers for Udemy courses as advertising. Yeah, we could do that as well. Um, we could just roll like uh, Udemy promo videos back to back, couldn't we? So, uh, soon slide, I can hardly read my own writing, I'm becoming a doctor plus vids. Yeah, that's all entirely possible. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, it's a pretty good idea. Better than, yeah, better than nothing, right? So uh, some weird emotes. Expand. Somebody was asking about emotes. Obviously only subscribers get emotes, but nearly everybody in this chat is a subscriber. So thank you. You're all awesome. Um, do you use CC or an older version? I don't know if you're asking me, but I know I have Photoshop CC. I just don't open it. Um, it'd be great if Ben could do a code escort quest better than most of the ones I've seen. Sometimes the AI is just stupid. Well, we, we can do it as good as as good as we need to, Bendy. Depends how much time we want to put in. Hardly on Twitch. Uh, if I stop subbing to a streamer, do I lose their emotes? Um, yes, you do lose their emotes. Can you use your emotes in somebody else's stream, by the way? Can you use our emotes, like these GDTV ones? Can you use those in somebody else's stream? Question for you guys. Question. Student package, do you call the small black bits in it? What do you call, how do you call the small black bits in it? Well, pips, pips, seeds. I'm not sure, I think I must have missed the moment there. Um, yes, 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 you can. Yes, you can use your emotes in other streams. Awesome, let's, oh, okay, there you go. You're showing me, you're demonstrating right there. All right, I'm gonna do it, let's get on, let's get this done. Now, this is interesting, architecturally, we have got this dude following me. This dude is called Escort Me Dude. Oops, Escort Me Dude. I'm just going to call it Escort Dude because that's even funnier. So we have Escort Dude here. Sorry about the name. Um, and he has a script called Escort that says want to take him to the bridge. Well, let's not take him all the way to the bridge, but let's take him to this fence here because the bridge is too far away. So I'm going to I'm going to get rid of the. Um... No, I better not. What are we going to use as a proxy for a bridge? Um, doesn't really matter. Is there something around here? Is there a bridge around here? Why did I say bridge in the first place? That was a strange thing to decide. It's going to be really hard to test if it's a bridge. I'm just going to sneak the escort dude off into these bushes is what I'm going to do. So this is going to be a proximity style thingamajig. So let's in the meadows zone, or you just click on a, an object that's already there. You can't click on these because they're trees. But in the meadows zone, um, somewhere alongside these escape detectors, I'm going to make a new game object. And that didn't work. Why did that not work? Because I was not selected on the right parent object, which is Meadows. The stream is a lot more stable, isn't it? It's quite cool. So this is bridge, question mark. Fake bridge, I'm going to call it. And then it's got a rec transform. Right, Rick, you peed me off now. Um, we are going to need this not to have a rect transform on it, this zone thing. 
although Rick has probably got a big billboard somewhere. Anyway, there's a note in the code for that. I'm going to live with it. I'm going to make... The reason I don't want to rec transform is when I make an empty child, what happens? I end up with a game object that has a rec transform in it. No harm done. You can always remove the component and add a standard transform, which happens actually automatically. So fake bridge. And then let's have a collider. And let's just have a box collider. And now let's go see it. Where is this fake bridge? It's over here. Do I want it over there? Not really. I want it in the little zone I was in. So where is the little zone I was in? Kind of don't know where I am in this village, actually, at all. It's quite embarrassing. So it doesn't really matter. You just go and grab the player's transform, copy the component, go to the fake bridge, paste component values, and then go to the player or the fake bridge. A little too coincident, I think. So let's just move the fake bridge collider volume here and scale it up a bit like so. And now there's a way that this can collide with something. So now this is where we're going to try composite quest stuff. If this was to have on it a collision, so where is it? Where's the quest thing? Um, collision. Oh, that's a bit of a weird name. You know, I took quest off the front of that. Collision is a little bit of a generic name now, but it's in the quest namespace. We're okay. So if we put the collision thingamajig there, and then I say that we're going to complete take me to the bridge. Wow. If that works... Guys, if that works, then our architecture rocks, by the way, because that was super easy. If I complete this quest just by putting a, you know, reusing a previous thingy like that, then, oh, wow, that's cool. Anyway, glasses, do they do that to you guys? Make little kind of red marks? I guess they do. I shall rest them more gently. My hands are trashed, by the way, and my arms are trashed from Krav Maga, from uh, the self-defense stuff I do. We hit each other a lot. Um, but there you go. So uh, let's have a go. Let's see if we can complete this quest. That would be ridiculous. If that worked. Squeak, squeak, squeaks. Turn the sound off. Which is arrogant because it sounds like I think that me is better than them. It's just, it's not. It's just, it's annoying. Take me to the bridge. Where's the bridge collider? Where was it? I think it's not working. I'd kind of be surprised if it did. So I need to know where it is. It's right, let's just put it right there. Why would that work? It wouldn't work. Because, let's have a look, there's no chance of it working, is it, if we think about it? Let's have a little look at collision. On trigger enter, you complete the quest. No, actually, it should. But it doesn't know to differentiate. It's not as simple as that. It doesn't know... What it's, firstly, it's not a trigger collider, so it's never going to work. So let's fix that as a starting point. So there is the fake bridge. It needs to be a trigger collider. Probably worth putting that in the notes of the... Oh, no, you don't need the notes. Self-documenting on trigger enter. But the problem is going to be that the player is going to complete it. But if the NPC is following us, the player going in it is probably good enough, actually. So there he is. Take me to the bridge. And if I go along here, take me to the bridge is not getting completed. No, not by me going in it. Okay, so is this, uh, have we got collision filtering going on? What collision layer is this on? Layer UI is nothing to do with that. Um, it is a trigger collider. All right, let's look at the escape detector. What's the deal with the escape detectors? They're box colliders that are triggers and have the escape and the collision thing on them. Okay, so the fake bridge is very, very similar to the escape detector. I can't see any difference in the, even in the layers. It is actually nothing to do with the layers. Not that any of these should be on the UI layer, by the way. That's a bit dodgy. So let's just take those off the UI layer. Check that the escape, the uh, the pen still works, and then go and see what on earth is wrong with my... Maybe I don't know where it is. No, it's here. It's definitely here. Okay, let's just go and uh, try escaping the pen. And the reason they... No, that's rubbish. Why is this not working? Something's gone wrong with my capture. My camera raycaster has all gone wrong. No, it hasn't. Escape the pen. Come on, out you go. Escape the pen worked. Okay, let's go get my bridge quest. Boom. Take me to the bridge. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Let's go trigger a collider. Ah! Wow. Mine got. Mine got. Is this German I'm speaking? Take me to the bridge. Just worked. Come on, let me just look at... I want to inspect the game object at runtime. Come on, Unity. What are you doing? Escape. Yeah, complete. I don't believe that. That that was too easy. That was code reusability right there. Do you see that? To escape the bridge, I just put a collision volume down and I dropped on a previously used... This is like, this is lucky. I'm putting this entirely down to luck. This is not 
pre-planning. If you think I'm pre-planning good architecture, I'm not. What I am doing is discovering good architecture, which means that you can do it too. I'm moving forward all the time, stumbling into what appears to be, at least at the moment, good architecture. So whoop for the good commit. Should we do a good commit whoop? Whoop. There you go. That was very excited. I could get much more excited than that if I tried. Do you guys know how to celebrate? Do you know how to actually celebrate? Like, if you jump up in the air and pump your hands, that's, that's always good. So we completed the follow quest. We kind of did. It kind of sucks because there's lots of things about it that aren't going to work that Rick's going to complain about. But we're brushing over at the top level. Anyway, I'm going to have a look over here. So completely unrelated, but I was on a flea market today. Yes. And you bought The Hobbit. Yes. You're super excited. Well, that's really nice. Glad to hear that tasty graph. Where can I buy a Unity RPG for beginners in Unity Extreme? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, here. And people earlier in the chat have showed you uh, the sequence of courses you can do. If you want a lead up to that, you can get that course there. And so on. Uh, you need to make the collider a trigger. Yeah, oh, man, should I just watch? I have the chat right there. And I'm still, you guys need a way of like pinging me saying, ding, Ben, wake up. You're being a fool. Hey, you know what we need? We need another icon, like a should we get an exclamation or a, what type of icon should I have for when you're trying to tell me that I'm doing something stupid? Perhaps just an exclamation, yeah? Or something else. What should we have for like, oh, a bell. How about a bell icon? Not as in bell end, but as in a bell. Bell icon? Uh, you thought it was going to work. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Maybe have a protected virtual void on quest complete if it can be overridden by quest. Oh, grasshopper. You cheeky monkey, that is sounding very ex clever. So have a protected virtual void on quest completed that can be overridden by quests. Yeah, could. Why is that better than just in quest completion, wherever it is? Just having a straight up complete quest. Because they all do the same thing for the moment. So I don't think we need to override and specialize them. Worth, a, worth, worth an idea. You need Twitch commands. What are Twitch commands? And have a function called uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you have to tell me more about why it would be better, Grasshopper. I'd actually recommend the game, of course, on Udemy, even if super experienced in coding. Unity naming conventions are different, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for that suggestion. What have we got here? Um, oh, this is search for my courses on Udemy. That's cool. You can do that. You'll actually do better. So these are courses that I'm directly in and teaching a lot of, not including Unity VR. Um, but if you want the game dev courses that I'm still designing all of, then you just want uh, these courses here. That's all of them searching for game dev TV. Uh, put it on the Discord, um, yada, yada. So yeah, cool. Ideally, the at game dev TV should get your attention. Yeah, that's true, num nuts. You'd probably need a moderator who can see your chat, use a specific command that triggers an audio cue. That's how I do it. Sometimes focus on code, I have to have my mods ping in. We could do that, maybe mods, if you guys want to join in. Um, maybe you could find some way of pinging me in an audio sense. That would be cool. All right, so look, I'm really glad that worked. So now the, the question comes, uh, what next? So, don't know, really. I haven't really thought about what next. Um, what next is I've been coding a long time and the stream's been going a long time, so maybe it's a check in with Rick and not do too much next. Uh, we are, we're doing quite well. Let me do the to-dos, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's clear the to-dos. So clear to-dos, because it's been too long. So if you ever get to, I'm not sure what to do next, one thing, you, I mean, you still feel like you've got some energy, one of the things you can do is clear your to-dos, of course, because that will get you to all those things that you've been planning on doing. So I'm just gonna check on the Twitch stream, make sure that A, it's okay, is it okay? Oh, error loading graph, server error. But it does look like we've been stable. Have we been stable? Not mentally stable, I'm not sure about that, but have we been stable from a from a Twitch streaming point of view? And then the other question is, how are we doing? How's the stream doing? I don't even know how many people are on, 52. Very nice, thank you very much for being here. All right, I am gonna go and clear my to-do. It's fine, to-do. Other ways of doing this, by the way, Visual Studio often finds, gives you some sort of op option for that, but do we really need to do it a different way? Zero issues have occurred here today. This is what I'm calling good news. So I'm going to do to-dos, but I'm not. I'm going to look through all of them, actually. So I need to undock that puppy there. Uh, click through a dialog box or close. Ensure you can click through a dialog box. Yeah, fine. Not doing that right now. What else have we got? To do uh, stuff that's relevant. May, need, really need a Boolean flag. We probably do. It's probably the case that it is state of the escort that they are 
escorting, so I think that's okay. Weapon config, to look, is this still happening on the player? Remove animation events. Yeah, we need to do that. I'm not gonna do that right now. It's just too far away from where I'm currently working psychologically. That's not, it's not good for me to depart that far from where I'm currently working. So I'm not gonna do that to do now. Um, what else have we got? Uh, voice. Well, some of these are asking Rick. What's wrong with this? Yuck. Why is that yuck? That's okay, getting a text component's okay. Oh, the fact that I've tagged the dialog box using a tag, it's probably all right. String reference, I'm gonna leave the yuck in there and I need to speak to Rick before I make any more decisions on that as to how he wants to lay it all out. Mm, I think we did get the actual quest description from here. Actual quest description, add quest. No, we don't need to do that. We get the quest by name, that's good. Anyway, you get the idea. I'll go through the to-dos and make sure that any of the ones that I that really need dealing with right now get dealt with. Now, what's up with my screen? That's better. So I'm gonna leave the character raycaster, uh, camera raycaster. We don't need a character configuration scriptable object probably at the moment. We might do if we have a lot of characters. I might do that. I might. Whenever you see a lot of serialized fields, you probably wanna consider extracting into a serialized a scriptable object because it means you've got a massive amount of configuration data. Uh, consider creating cast from convo to string. What I have, I don't think I need that. Um, what are my comments really need to be a mono behavior? The journal probably does really an update. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm not gonna keep up, up apologizing for updates. Um, I'm doing something in my windowing here. What's going on? Why can't I dock this search results? Um, is it, do I need to do that? No, not sure. Where am I supposed to be clicking to get this search results box in the right place? Struggle. Don't know. I've never lost it like that before. Come on then guys, how do I get the search results to dock somewhere sensible? Like that, is it? Yeah. Okay, thank you for your support. <laughs> your moral support, if nothing else. Start of shared code in the camera raycaster. Gonna leave the camera raycaster out of it. Yeah, we've considered that. Yeah. Couple with collision. We did, actually. Find the player if in range. Um, I'll let Rick tell me about that. Resolve name conflict. Where? Get component character. Uh, there isn't a name conflict or the code wouldn't compile. Don't believe that. Uh, does this really need to be a mono behavior? That yes, because it's talking to text elements that are in the scene. So we need to be a mono behavior. Consider persistence across scene. I have. I think our, our quest data will persist across the screen. Um, yes, we need to implement some more types. So this is one of the things we need to do. But what we said actually was we we're going to go to inventory next. Uh, rename enemy canvas to NPC canvas. Right. After speaking to Rick, consider a singleton for the dialog box. Let's not. I don't like singletons unless they're implemented without statics, which we show you how to do in this course. Uh, Udemy CU2, I think, is where we show you how to make singletons without statics. Statics suck. Singleton pattern does not suck necessarily and does not necessarily need to be using statics. All right, good, I think I am done. I am gonna make sure that we know what we're doing next, which is moving into inventory. And I'll put that in the commit message. I'm gonna start closing down. So clear to-dos that I wanted to clear. <laughs> um, and then next is inventory. Awesome, we're actually making huge progress. Oh, at the broad strokes, there's a lot of detail, but we're making huge progress on the broad, broad strokes because the things this RPG needed in broad terms are questing and inventory and dialogue. We've done basic dialogue, very, 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 very basic dialogue. We've done very, very, very basic questing with an architecture that I'm actually thinking is quite interesting. I'm quite glad that I'm storing the quests and the only place that I'm storing the quests is in game objects in the world. I think that's very cool for Rick and uh, the designer for rebug de rebugging? <laughs> rebugging. <laughs> rebugging is like taking something that didn't have bugs and putting them back in. I think that Microsoft do that with a lot of their updates. Um, so yeah, that's cool. I'm really pleased with that. The stream uh, repo is here if you guys want it. The branch I just worked on today is uh, stream eight and that's all pushed up to GitHub right now. So I'm gonna go work on some emotes, I think, and uh, start thinking about asking my wife when she's getting home, because when she gets home, we stuff our faces ceremoniously. Um, yeah, so that's cool. I might even ring my mum, that's supposed to be a good thing. 
um, isn't it? So she gets very confused about like group messages and stuff. Uh, <laughs> anyway, all right, guys, quick last check on the chat and then I will uh, end the stream. It's been going for ages. Thank you for your subscriptions. Uh, we could use, I don't know how many tier three subscribers we've got now. Let's go and have a look at the, uh, well, no, I can't look at my Twitch dashboard live. Can I get in trouble? Probably, probably not allowed to, but let's just see how we're doing on subscribers. So we are, we are doing pretty well. We've got um, three tier twos. Remember, as a tier two, you get linked to your Twitch page. You get, you're going to get some extra emotes very, very soon. Uh, you support us 240% higher. Tier three, you get your code reviews Tuesday, tomorrow evening with Sam and I. Keep an eye on our Twitch events page. As a tier three subscriber, you can come on Zoom live with us like Lucy did earlier, and you can actually get your questions answered and your code reviewed. Terra Vice, thank you very much for the uh, testimonial, by the way, of our first code review. I have put that on the bottom of the Twitch page here. So if you scroll down on here you'll see a tier three testimonial from TerraVice. So TerraVice, you rock. I hope that's okay on there. If it isn't, tell me immediately and I shall remove it, but I'm sure it will. As a tier three or a tier two, you get linked, <coughs> excuse me, off to your Twitch page. Um, and you can buy our gear. I've put the cheapest stuff first, the most sensible stuff first. This is most of the stuff I use. Um, the Twitch schedule after a cup of tea, I'm gonna come and embellish, but keep an eye on our event schedule. Keep subscribing. Um, Oh, there you go. That was something like that. Thank you very much, Terra Vice, for sending yet another testimonial. Yeah, I mean, having Sam and I experienced coders really look at your code. The code you've actually written is very different to self-analyzing, right? We have the unfair advantage of perspective. We can see um, we can see things that you're not going to be able to see in your own code. How do you change your subscription level? Um, I will try and show you. Uh, so you should, along the top here, be able to... You won't have gift a sub. You'll have a button here a bit like gift along the top sub here, be able to allow you to will allow you to choose the sub level you want to be. So you click the green and then also make sure you're following us. That's quite important so you know when stuff's coming up. The other thing to tell you, if you don't, not that I'm a Twitch expert, that if you were uh, looking at our events page as a not logged in, so uh, like this, then um, you can rem get the set reminders for events. In like so, somewhere in here you can set a reminder. Again, you need to oh, remind me, that's it. So that'll tell you if there's events you want, set remind me. And this is how you subscribe and you get free trial if you have Amazon Prime, Twitch Prime. So link your Amazon account to Twitch. Otherwise you can go more paid subscription options and there they are, tier one, tier two, tier three. We don't control the prices, Twitch do. So thank you very much for supporting us. The more you support us, the better. Should we do stream labs donations? Uh, very much like, so I've been looking at Ninja's page because obviously Ninja is the, the man to follow here on Twitch. So if we go and find Ninja for a second, is it just Ninja? Probably. If we look at this, he's got some nice little um, he's got some nice little things down here. And one of the things he takes here is uh, Streamlabs donations. Should we do that just in case people want to give us some extra support? So if you think we should, tell us in the chat. And I'll do some like icons a bit like this. Look a little bit more like uh, like Ninja's page because he the man. And then uh, this is our Discord chat server. Uh, People see their code, your code, Tasty Graph, they'll turn blind. I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm sure they'll learn a lot from it. Honestly, a super beginner programmer doesn't matter. Don't believe that you need to not be a super beginner programmer. The moment you uh, that you open yourself up and become vulnerable enough to show other people your warts and all is the moment you really start learning. So it doesn't matter how um, how beginner you are. Swamp Light 2017, I think I just preempted you there. Yes, we do have a Discord, absolutely. We also have an amazing community forum there that gets getting on for a million visits a month. Uh, about 997,413 of those are Rob Mead because he's amazing and looks after the forum for us. Um, yeah, you won't look dumb, don't worry about it. Seriously, the more people can come on the tier three subs and ask simple questions about simple code, the better for everybody. And the more able I am to help people get traction in their early code and really write stuff nicely. So please, if you're basic and you're simple, come on, never too simple. If you can write code that compiles, it's not too simple for us to, um, to review. So Tasty Glass giving me some advice about donations. Have the ability of refunding up to six months, so be aware many students falling into the trap. Then pull back, uh, bit donations can't be refunded. Okay, thank you very much. So if we do do something along the donations line, we won't, I mean, look, it would all be gladly received, but not expected. I think the way that Ninja puts that is great. And uh, it's a really good idea that if we do donations, we don't even think about uh, drawing the money out until six months, because you absolutely should have the long term uh, ability to withdraw any donation, you know, you might get super excited, donate and then decide not to. So awesome. I think that's really good. And I think that's really nice. 
Is there a subscriber on the docket already for tomorrow night? Perceptual lucidity. Yes, I think Terra Vice is going to be there. Um, and also, I think that one of the other subs said they would be here. I can't remember who said they would. But yes, I think there's two or one already. But please just look. It's a first come, first serve. We don't. The lock comes as in, you know, when do you take out a lock and say, I'm there? It comes 15 minutes before the event. Yeah, you've got the... Um, You've got the Zoom room, hopefully. If you haven't, I'm going to send it to you guys now anyway as soon as I finish the stream, um, just to make sure that you have that. In fact, I think I've already done that. Let me just check my whispers. Can you confirm, you Tier 3s, that you have actually got your Zoom room link now already working? I'm pretty sure that you have and that you don't need me to resend it. It'll be in a Twitch whisper. And if you'd prefer I sent it by email, then we can do that. Lucy, if you're still on the stream and you can hear, maybe you could send them a link to the, um, to the event. But regardless, we'll get that to you. What you do is you turn up, and uh, you 15 minutes before you're on Zoom with your internet working, your sound working and ready to share your screen. You don't have to share your face, but you do need to share your screen. And then we'll pick randomly from the group of people who are actually there ready to go. And they're the people who get to go. So, yep, that's how it works. Yeah, it's supposed to function to revise one person at a time, Jason. Um, one person at a time, back to back, just two people per week. That's how it's supposed to be doing. But if, if you're there and you're online, you're ready to go, of course, you're at the front of the queue. So it doesn't even have to be code. It can be uh, marketing questions about your game, which I can help with initially, and then we'll pull Rick in in a future review if you need that. It can be uh, art or blender questions, in which case Michael can help. So, yeah. All good. All right, guys, I'm going to end the stream. It's been really nice working with you again, um, and I will see. Um, I will see you soon. Terra Vice, see you tomorrow. Everybody, see you tomorrow. Keep an eye on the event stream, and uh, thank you very much for being here. And uh, I'm glad that you guys are all supporting us. Thank you very much.